them back on track after a brutal road trip. Tonight, one of their best, Matt Kane, goes in game one against their longtime rivals. The Dodgers were feeling blue just a month ago, but the emergence of Yasiel Puig has rejuvenated L.A., and the streaking Dodgers have won 10 of their last 12. The Giants, the Dodgers, next. The big crowd is gathering. You see the scene outside in 24 Willie Mays Plaza as the Giants and the Dodgers renew their long-standing rivalry. Hello, everyone. I'm John Miller, along with Mike Kruko. Welcome to San Francisco Giants baseball. A couple of weeks ago, the Giants were up. The Dodgers were down, big time down. Things have changed in a hurry. The Dodgers sweeping the Giants last week in L.A. And that's how the Giants started their miserable road trip, losing eight of nine. And they're just not scoring. Other than Buster, Pody, uh, Buster Posey, nobody's hitting the ball. The last 13 games, they scored only 26 runs, two per game. Yeah, just seven hits in the last three games. Four and 14 in their last 18 games. Ten for 77 in the runners in scoring position. They're not hitting except for Posey. And it's frustrating when he's hot, the big guy, and you're not winning games. That even makes everybody grind a little bit more. But there is a good stat tonight. Ryu, the starting pitcher for the Dodgers, well, he's got a little history with Posey, Pence, Scudero, and Andres Torres, those guys collectively, 17 for 35. They're hitting 485 against them. That's what I'm betting on. All right. So the Giants, bound to break out of this sooner or later, maybe tonight against Ryu. They do have some numbers against him. Mike and I will be back at at and Park with more after this. Giants and the Dodgers. Matt Cain was scheduled yesterday in Cincinnati. The game rained out, so Matt Cain goes tonight against the Dodgers, and he's had great success recently against L.A., but he's also facing a team that hardly anybody's faced this year. The Dodgers, for the first time all year, have their entire lineup back. 
Well, I, normally that would be a cause of concern, but when Matt Cain is throwing well, he doesn't care who he's facing. Because what Matt Cain does is he utilizes five or six different types of movement, and he's able to pinpoint it in the strike zone. In his last five starts, he's been fantastic. They've all been quality starts. It figures to be a very well-pitched game because his opponent tonight, Sun Jin Ryun, the left-hander for the Dodgers, is a guy who's coming in six and three with an ERA in the two. So those are credentials. Keep an eye out on the Andre Ethier Matt Cain matchup. That's been a very, very bad matchup for Matt Cain. How he handles him, I think, will be significant in tonight's ball game. And watch Posey, Pence. That's a great one-two punch against Ryu. So uh, I think matchups are what this game's all about. The team that plays the cleanest game defensively is going to win this game. Yeah, Ethier has that great history of success. And he's in there and not Carl Crawford, who is just off the disabled list. So that's why Ethier's in over Crawford here tonight. Stay tuned now. We'll take you to the Comcast Sportsnet studios for an update right after these messages. in the Comcast Sportsnet studios. Should be a great series. Rivalry renewed, Dodgers and Giants. And Matt Cain takes the baseball tonight, Vita, for San Francisco. And really, they couldn't ask for a better guy. He has been terrific his last five years. Yeah, it, it was great that they got rain out yesterday. I'm sure that they were sick of Cincinnati. But Cain is going to take the mound tonight. He's, uh, uh, I think he's like, he is 1-0 and against the Dodgers and two stars. But, uh, you know, left hands are hitting 200 against him and uh, right hand is only hitting... 229, I think it is. So uh, he's in for a good outing anyway. The guys are back home. And I just thought about this, you know, just come back and pitch. Do what you do, Matt Kane, and take control of the ball game. And uh, hopefully you'll get some run support. That's the only thing you can ask for. Just do your job, though. It's really incredible how the landscape of the National League West has changed in a very short period of time. Yeah, right. You know, it wasn't long ago the Dodgers were sort of a, a, an afterthought. They were an also-ran, but they've played so well over the last couple of weeks. You see that 10-2 and two since June 22nd. Everybody else now seems to be catching the Dodgers, even though they're still in the middle of the pack. Yeah, but they're gotten hot. They're batting like 292 as a ball team. They're averaging 5.2 runs a game in, the, in those 12 games. And they've hit 16 home runs. That's what's scary. Well... Yeah, Sale Puig is the talk of not uh -huh. just Southern California, not just California, but all of Major League Baseball. And the numbers this kid has put up in his first month of big league action, absolutely off the charts good. What has impressed you so much about Puig? I'm not sure if it's the 430 he's hit in the 29 games, <laughs> or the eight home runs, or the 19 ribs, or the total of 49 hits. But uh, he is a superstar in the making, and uh, he is really... Uh, 
energize this ball team. And they got Henley Ramirez back, too, and he's hitting 397 in the middle of that lineup. So uh, they've gotten hot, and the Giants have their work cut out for them. That's a great point. Everybody yeah. points to Puig, but Henley's been almost as good the last month. And, oh, by the way, they get Carl Crawford back for this series. Matt Kemp is back. They're getting healthy, and we know how much talent is on that roster. And you just cannot count them out. They have, they've gotten, they're gotten energized. They've gotten healthy. And uh, it's going to be a long season. So the battle is on for the uh, Western Division as we speak right now tonight. How big is this series psychologically for the Giants? Well, first of all, coming home where they are comfortable in the, the friendly confines of AT&T Park. So let's hope that they are just get back there and do what they do, which is just play baseball. It's, it's just baseball. It's not rocket science. It's baseball. <laughs> Easier said than done for a guy like Vita Blue. Of course, we'll be with you every step of the way following game one of this series on NBC Bay Area. Check back with us on Sportsnet Central for complete post-game coverage and post-game reaction from AT&T <laughs> Park. Game one, Dodgers and Giants. Get you out for first pitch with John Miller and Mike Kruko right after this. High winds on the bay here tonight in the ballpark. The wind is blowing out toward left field. The Dodgers batting order now brought to you by your Northern California Honda dealers at shophonda.com. Mark Ellis leads off second base. The sensational Yasiel Puig in right field hitting 430. Adrian Gonzalez, the veteran at first. Hanley Ramirez is now even hotter than Puig hitting 483. In a 15 game hitting streak, six home runs in that time. Andre Ethier with a history of success against Kane, left field. Matt Kemp in center. He's homered in each of his last two games. A.J. Ellis, the catcher. Juan Uribe is at third base, hitting eighth. And Yun Jin Ryu is the pitcher, batting ninth. All up against Giants right hander Matt Kane. Take a look at the numbers for Matt Kane on the year five and four with a 4.29 ERA. This is the 18th start for the three-time All-Star. Matt Kane against these Dodgers, five and eight with a 3.17 ERA. That doesn't quite tell the whole story. The last 11 starts, Kane against the Dodgers, five and zero with a 1.93 ERA. So he has pitched beautifully against them. He knows them well. 101 strikeouts against 30 walks with Kane. You're going to see a fastball that'll go. Anywhere between 90 and 94 miles per hour. Two types of movement a two seam fastball and a four seam fastball. He'll cut the fastball. He's got a curveball, a slider, and a very good changeup. Perhaps his best pitch when you start talking about swing and miss type pitches. This changeup is both effective against lefties and righties. Let's take a look at 
the defense playing behind Matt Payne starting in the the Giants outfield from left to right. Say hello to Cole Gillespie, who just got called up today. Juan Perez was sent back to Fresno. He's joined by Andres Torres and Hunter Pence. That's your outfield. Brandon Crawford, Sandoval on the left side of the infield. Scooter O'Belt on the right side. Buster Posey, he'll be in the squad putting down the signs. Kane. Ready to throw the first pitch of the night. Here it is to Mark Ellis. Just missing on the outside. Manny Gonzalez is the home plate umpire calling the balls and strikes with Tony Randazzo, Larry Vanover, and Brian Gorman from first to third. Sharply to Pablo. One away. Pablo got it. a long sleeve over his, or, or, a, or an ace bandage over his right forearm. Uh, just a style statement. Definitely keeping his elbow warm. So here is Yasiel Puig making his AT&T Park debut. National League Player of the Month of June and National League Rookie of the Month of June. He chases that Matt Cain breaking ball. It's on one. Puig has played 29 Major League games hitting 430, 8 homers, 19 batted in. And that one cuts off the outside. This one he took. One ball, one strike. Puig, only 22 years old, six feet, three inches tall. To the inside, and Pablo's got this one. Puig hustling up the line, out by a step, two down. Well, Puig is very athletic. A little things like running from the right side. Up the line, he excels in. It's consistently at right around four seconds, which will put pressure on a guy, even with a one-hop shot. And look how close it is. I mean, that's pretty good speed. So far, if you ever wonder why they call it the hot corner, wonder no more. Two well-hit balls, two outs. So Puig retired. That has not often been seen. 49 hits in his first 29 games. Here is the veteran Adrian Gonzalez. A little bit low on the outside. Ball one. Manny Gonzalez, the plate umpire, has a good strike zone. You're going to get some width on both sides of the plate. He prefers the low strike, but when you get in the first, you normally get in the ninth. Very consistent zone. Looking back. Now Kane watching out for that bat. Broke belatedly for the bag, but got there in plenty of time as it turned out. Three up, three down. Torres, Scudero, and Pablo Sandoval coming up. Baseball's color line in 1947 with the Dodgers. 1947, his number has been perpetually retired by all teams in baseball. The Giants batting order presented by Audi. Truth in engineering. It'll be Andres Torres, center field. 
Marco Scudero back in there, second base. Pablo Sandoval, third base. Buster Posey, the catcher, hitting fourth. Hunter Pence is six for eight against Ryu this year in right field. Brandon Belt at first. Cole Gillespie just up for the minors in left field. Brandon Crawford at short, and Matt Kane, the pitcher, hits ninth. And Yunjin Ryu for South Korea on the mound for LA. And his first pitch to Torres. A strike on the outside corner. Now, when you take your bats against Ryu, you're going to see a guy that throws a fastball right around 90 from with both types of, of movement, the two seam and the four seam. He can pitch. And he drops in that breaking ball for a called strike two. He's got a good curveball. He's got a slider, an outstanding changeup, and he'll throw all of his pitches. He's a big guy, 6'2", 260 pounds, 26 years old, a rookie. And the fastball is high. One ball, two strikes. I guess the, uh, the radar gun is not working at the moment. There's the umpire crew for this one. Just out toward the mound. Were you? Safe! Ryu kind of threw a change up over there and did not quite get it there in time. In fact, he had a little problem with the exchange. Footwork's good, everything's great. He just couldn't get it out of the glove. And there's a high throw. Just kind of goosed over to Gonzalez. And guys made a cut of break. Very close play. Let's look at the numbers on the year as to what Ryu has done in his rookie campaign. Seven solid seasons in Korea. This is his 17th start, 6 and 3 to the 2 8 3 ERA. I and mean, those are good solid numbers right there. And he's eating right handers up. Right, he's hitting 222. Left, he's hitting 308. Torres back to the bag at first. Now, this right handed hitter with a 312 overall batting average this year has hit 400 against Ryu. Four for 10. Andres Torres. Now five for ten against him. As we mentioned, Penn six for eight. Way outside, ball one. Pablo Sandoval is on deck. No score, last of the first. Ryu made his first major league start for the Dodgers against the Giants in the second game of the season, April the 2nd in L.A. And the Giants won that game 3 nothing back of Madison Bumgarner. And high and outside again, 2-0. and One thing that we've really been impressed with, and Ryu in two starts against the Giants has not beaten him. He's 0-2, but he's a good situational pitcher, and that's what he learned in seven years of professional baseball in Korea. And he can pitch for the ground ball. He's a guy that can get the double play. Off the outside again, 3-0. and Sandoval is on deck. Scudero, who's got some problems with his right hip that has created trouble in his lower back. And that is also up and away. So I know sometimes you talk about the first time a guy goes out of the stretch. It'll be interesting to see what happens. And it did not work well for Ryu. Ryu misses is taking with the Dodger defense playing behind Ryu in the outfield. Eve here. Kemp and Puig, excellent arms in center field and right field. Ramirez joined by Uribe on the left side of the infield. Ellis and Gonzalez on the right side. And A.J. Ellis will be in the squad putting down the signs. So here's Pablo. Two men on for the Giants. An early threat against Ryu. Sonoval down to 264. One hit in his last 30 at-bats. Got the call on that one, and it's on one. That little bit of a wider strike zone we were talking about. You know, a lot of umpires start out with a, with a tight strike zone, and they'll loosen up, and, and Gonzalez is like that. But uh, we've seen his zone a couple times, and we were really impressed with the consistency of it. There's a bump. Rolling foul. 30 feet or so from home plate. Uh, it kind of tells you where Sandoval's at right now. I mean, he's really been putting a lot of extra work to try and figure out where his swing is. And uh, this, uh, with the runners at first and second, you figure it's a low risk play. If it's fair, you might get a base hit. And if, you, if it's fair and you don't get a base hit, you're at least going to move the runners over. Not what you normally see from a guy with power from both sides of the plate. We're well, behind to the count now. 0 oh and 2. Pablo's first game back 
from the disabled list was at Dodger Stadium 11 days ago and he had two hits in his first three at bats in that game and that was against Ryu and this road trip just killed him three for 33 and, and just not driving the ball at all There's nothing really coming off the bat with loud noises and in the fists and out goes Mark Ellis and no infield fly ever called on that one So Ryu, who, as you mentioned, Mike, real tough. You put a couple men on base, and he gets real tough. That's been the Jacks' experience with him. Buster Posey now. 312. Even Buster, right at the end of the road trip, the hits disappeared. All for his last 12. He was the National League Player of the Week last week. He had a big week for the Giants. And that's back out of play. Posey had a double against Ryu that knocked him out of the game in the seventh inning 11 days ago at Dodger Stadium. That is three for eight plus a couple of walks against him this year. Torres at second, Scooter Rowe at first. No score in the game, one out. Now Ryu spins towards second, blue, bluffing Torres back. Dodgers play Buster Posey to hit the ball to right field. They've got Matt Kemp about five steps out of straightaway center towards the gap. So they pinch this part of the plate, anticipating this is where he's going to go. And they also give him this side. So really, this is a great opportunity to the left centers. Off the inside, maybe a little bit low as well. One ball, one strike. I think a lot of times teams to, will tell you how they're going to pitch you just by the way they set themselves up in the outfield. And the defense the Dodgers are employing now, it, it's it's a pitch them away, play them away defense. You should see a lot of stuff on the outside part of the plate. Ball on a strike to Posey, going away. Off the outside. Two and one. So. Ryu falls behind the count to Buster Posey. Yeah, one thing about a, a hitter like Posey, and you're really great hitters, you, you can't you can't be one dimensional. You can't just pound one side of the plate. You have to establish you can throw a fastball on both sides of the strike zone, in and out. Get all your pitches over. And the high curveball misses. Three and one. He's thrown 15 pitches in this inning and more out of the strike zone than in. Ryu, eight balls, seven strikes so far. He's walked one. And he's behind Posey, three balls and a strike. Ellis breaking to the bag at second. Ryu stepped off the slab, no throw. Well, that's smart. Tip for all you young pitchers. If you ever have a middle infielder come to second base to try and pick off a guy and you're not going to throw, don't go home because he's out of position. Step off. That's too low. The walk to Posey loads the bases for the Giants. And Hunter Pence. And we go back to May 5th, and this was a big swing of the bat. A two run double. Two, two RBI doubles that day. He was the big man. And before the game today, he said that he spent that home last night and went back and looked at all of his notes. I really think that he has found a problem as to why he's not driving the ball the opposite way with power. I said, well, you hit two balls really hard in your last game in Cincinnati. He goes, I did. He said, but I didn't have much behind it. If I hit that ball with, with the way I'm supposed to, it should get out of the ballpark. So his batting practice session, session today, very spirited. Into the hole in short. Ramirez quick to the second. There's one. Not in time to first. Good turn there by Mark Ellis. On a feed that wasn't that great from Hanley Ramirez, but ultimately the speed of Hunter, Pen, uh, Hunter Pence wins out at first base as Torres goes to third and a, a, a run scores. Torres scores. Yeah, I was pays to have great speed for this reason. This is an RBI. Guys who are slow, it's a big league hang with them. What's your point about Ellis is way real taken. He's got a very strong arm for a second baseman and a quick release. Had that been an average speed runner, he would have got him. So Pence gets the RBI. 
The Giants have a one nothing lead and here is Brandon Bell. That's a strike. Yeah, it may look like just one up there on the board, but the fact that they've scored a run in the first inning is significant. That's something that's been very hard for them to do as a group collectively for the last three weeks. I had to look twice. <laughs> Scooter out third, pants it first. He chased on two. Bell, one of only two left handed hitters in the lineup for the Giants. Belt has only had three plate appearances against Ryu. But he's had a couple of walks against him and a ground out. Belt with nine homers, 35 batted in. And the high fastball puts him away. The Giants eke out a run. And then we go to the second. Handley Ramirez coming up. Geico.com today, May 5th, 2013. That's right. That's just a few weeks ago. Matt Kane defeated the Dodgers. Seven of third strong. Five hits. One earning. Three base on balls. Four strikeouts. And 109 very efficient pitches. That's your reward. Walking off to a standing ovation. Hanley Ramirez. Red hot. Leads off for the Dodgers. Oh. Strike one. Kane who threw only seven pitches in the first inning. Hanley Ramirez saying that last year he was coming back from shoulder surgery and he didn't think he was ever right last year. This year, a couple of different injuries have set him back. But he's swinging the best he's swung in two or three years right now. That fastball just off the inside and up a little bit. One ball, one strike. Now one thing that's, that's common about all hitters who are locked in and absolutely red hot. Like Ramirez is, and that's how relaxed they look in the batter's box. And you watch his movements, and he is just very slow with his lower body, very relaxed. Mm, a little bit low, apparently. Trying to go front door with that curveball. Did not miss by much. There's a lot of umpires that won't give that pitch. 250 lifetime average against Kane, including a home run, 36 at bats. Down and away. And it's three and one. There's been sort of a national debate going on about young Yasiel Puig. Whether or not he should be placed on the all-star team after his great first month as a big league player and who's just burst upon the scene. And Kane kind of suspected he might be swinging a one on three and one. Yeah, 36 at bats against guy. You get to know him pretty well what his tendencies are. And the one thing that Kane knows about Ramirez is he didn't like to walk. And neither does Puig for that matter. It's interesting though, both Puig and Hanley Ramirez have played exactly the same number of games. 
in the big leagues this year. That is just foul. Hit very hard and just foul. Three and two. And while we talk about Puig all the time, who's had one month in the big leagues, and it's been a great month hitting 438 homers, Hanley Ramirez, who's had a lot more than just one month in the big leagues, he's been an all star in the past. He's had an excellent career. But Hanley Ramirez hitting 404 with seven home runs. His numbers are almost the same as Puig's in the same number of games. Three and two. And he walks. First base runner for the Dodgers. Well, Friday, July the 26th, upcoming, three weeks from tonight, will be social media night here at AT&T Park. There's a special event package, including your ticket to the game, Giants Cubs, access to the social media night pregame party, and a collector's edition Marco Scudero rain globe depicting the final moments of the 2012 NLCS Game 7 here at AT&T Park. Go to sfgiants.com slash special events. You must purchase a special event ticket to receive the Marco Scudero rain globe that depicts that moment. That was a great moment. One of the enduring up, images of that great yes, night for the up. Giants and that remarkable ninth inning where the, the heavens just opened up. Was, the, the game got finished in a, in a torrential downpour. Andre Ethier with a lot of success in his past against Kane. Past Brandon Belt and down the right field line. Hanley Ramirez is going to be held at third as the relay comes to Scudero. His throw to Posey. A double for Ethier. And the Dodgers have second and third with nobody out here in the second inning. It's just amazing how on it works. I mean, on another night, this ball gets hit right at the first baseman. It's five feet to the right. Maybe not even. But here, the, the, the owners that he has had on Kane, the numbers that he has had against Kane, and everything that could possibly go against Kane, it happens. He's just a guy he can't get out. No matter how he pitches him, no matter how they play him, he just can't get him out. Good work by Pence to get that ball quickly into the relay man, Marco Scudero. Now, as you saw there, 453. Lifetime batting average for Ethier against Matt Kane. 29 hits and 64 at bats. Matt Kemp, he's been coming back this year from a shoulder injury, but he's had homers in each of the last two games. Ball one. So suddenly Kemp is starting to find himself. At least that's the Dodgers' hope. He spent a, a long time on the disabled list this year with a hamstring problem. Only a 216 lifetime average for Kemp against Kane. Ground ball to a middle infielder should get a run home here. Giants infield back with nobody out. Got the call on that one. One ball, one strike. Well, it's not the end of the world if you're walking here. It sets up a force. It's actually, I think with nobody out, I think it's easier to pitch with bases loaded than it is with runners at second and third. Provided you're a guy like Kane who can throw strikes at, at, at just about any time. So there is an open base. He does not have to flat out challenge him in the strike zone. Giants leading 1 0. Dodgers with a threat. And he chased that fastball. Look, he's hurt. Oh. Uh, he swings through and watch him grab the left shoulder as the bat comes around his back. Some kind of subluxation right there. He's had a bad problem with it the last year. And it really explains why. His power numbers are way down. Sue Falson, the head Dodger trainer, out to see to Matt Kemp. Don Matavey, the manager, also out there. Almost like Matavey was saying, hey, let's not fool around with this. Don't try to be a hero. Well, he's got Carl Crawford on the bench. Right after he swung and missed, reached up and grabbed at that area. A little fastball, belt high in the outside corner. In fact, off the plate away, so uh, Kent goes out of the strike zone. 
to Matt Cain, you, you got to go back out there again. One ball and two strikes to Kemp. A.J. Ellis, another right-handed hitter, is on deck. Ramirez at third, Ethier at second. Kemp's on top of play, he moved up. Blocked by Posey. Two and two. You guys will do that. They'll definitely adjust their stance in the box as to how they're getting pitched. They'll do that with certain strike zones. That the strike zone from an umpire will determine that. And he moved up just a little subtle three inches closer. You see Buster Posey staring at the feed. He's got it marked with that front line. That's, that's why hitters kick that chalk line out early in a ball game. So it's a little more difficult for catchers to, to measure where they stand in the batter's box. Batter's box lines, they, <laughs> they get wiped out early. Two and two to count. And it's a full count. Well, he's he's gone out there a couple of times and not been able to throw it in the strike zone. Three and two. There's A.J. Ellis, who is on deck. One nothing Giants, but Hanley Ramirez walked to start the inning, and then Ethier pulled a double just past the first base bag. Second and third, nobody out. Again, not close. The cane missed badly after Hanley Ramirez looked like he was injured and could never come close to the strike zone again. Now well, three easy takes too for Matt Kane or for Matt Kemp rather. I did not see that coming. Looks like they, they might have a an advantage over Matt Kemp. But then he couldn't ever find out. So the bases are loaded. The Giants double play depth. Oh, a little high, I guess. Gonzalez's preference, the plate umpire's preference, is to the knee high strike. He likes the low strike. You don't get a lot of those belts. AJ Ellis, four for 14 against Kane in the past. That's a strike. One ball, one strike to count. Hanley Ramirez, Andre Ethier, Matt Kemp from third back to first, the base runners. There you see the layout here. The Jets middle infielders, Crawford at short, Scudero at second, double play depth. Pablo backed up a few steps back in the bag at third. Shallow right field, Hunter Pence, Hanley Ramirez tagging up in foul ground, and Hanley is just bluffing. And one hot throw. The league knows what type of arm that Pence has. And from a shallow set when he caught the ball with a good momentum coming into the fly. Just no chance for Hanley Ramirez, even despite his pretty good speed. Just not deep enough. Well, Pence backs it up with a one hot strike to Posey. And there's Matt Kane backing it up back near the backstop. I think that's a great opportunity for outfielders to show their arm off a little bit. Got a few oohs and a few ahs. Now Uribe. Double play would end the inning. That's back out of play. Uribe hitting 270. With a 348 on base average. He's been much more of an on base guy this year than ever before. Uribe had just been terrible as a Dodger. This year hitting 270. The pinch in the dirt outside and a block by Buster Posey. Well, that the ball of dirt definitely by design. The Giants know Uribe way too well. They know that he will chase out of the strike zone down. And Kane will try and take advantage of that here. I mean, the beautiful thing about pitching the ball below the strike zone, if you have an aggressive hitter, is even if he puts it in play, he's usually going to hit a ground ball. And a ground ball could get Kane out of this inning. 
One out, bases loaded. The pitcher, Ryu, do up next. Just off the outside. Two and one. Kane, who had that very quick first inning, and it's a good thing, he's already thrown 20 pitches here in the second inning. And this has been much more of an ordeal for Kane. Bases loaded, one out. Two and one the count. Base hit. Ramirez in to tie the game, and right behind him is Ethier. The throw goes to third, not in time, and that puts Uribe at second. Colt Gillespie went for the runner at third. That's where the shortstop Brandon Crawford set up for the relay, but it now has taken away the chance for a double play. And Dave Rigetti will go to the mound. The slider looks like right out of the plate at the knees. And Uribe is having a redeemer year here as he's going to be a free agent after the end of the season. Goes down and yanks it in the left field. So the one run lead the Giants have gone. And now it's fight to stay out of the big inning. Two run single for Uribe and he goes to second on the throw that went to third. So here is Yunjin Ryu. Ryu is hitting 226. Seven hits, 31 at bats, including two doubles and a triple this year. The Giants in at the corners, in halfway at short and second. Uh, Posey jumps up, calling timeout. Two to one, LA. And Ryu also a pretty good bunter. And he definitely knows how to employ the safety squeeze. And a, a runner at third, Matt Kemp, who usually is pretty fast. The high fastball driven deep and foul off the bricks beyond the seating area, but very much foul. Got a man there, had him played right. Strike one to Ryu. Just give you an idea how strong this guy is. I mean, 6'2, 260. He is a man and a half in that uniform. He does a lot of things that uh, tell you how strong he is. On the breaking ball, a strike on the outside. And it's 0 2. Kemp, we, we mentioned Kemp, ordinarily a fast runner, but he is back now after a hamstring problem. That high fastball driven into the bullpen area. Yeah, that would make a habit of throwing him up. And it's normally a pretty good pitch for Kane. He's made a pretty good living striking people out, chasing that high fastball above the zone, but. We've seen Ryu beat that high fastball in Los Angeles. No balls, two strikes to count. Two runs in, runners at second and third. Wow. Oh, great pitch, didn't get it. Pretty good eye there by Ryu. Stay off it. Throw it again, you'll get it. Wow. Kane wonders where that was now. Signaling in, may have said something. Two and two. Yeah, that was kind of a mistake, though. I mean, it's not something you really want to make a habit of throwing high breaking balls. And I think with Gonzalez, you're not going to get a, a lot of high pitches. Certainly not in a breaking ball. Go two and two. Slider's a little temperamental right right now. It's not completely there for him. And he threw one that had a little backup on it that beat him with Uribe, and it didn't have a whole lot of slide coming across the plate. And he, this last one here, they set that target outside, and it came back over the middle of the plate. That was a mistake to location. It's a full count. Kane's got to be thinking, what do I have to do to get this guy to swing? Yeah. 
This will be the 29th pitch in the inning thrown by Kane and still has only one out. And Ryu, the pitcher, making him throw a lot. Three and two. Well, that one he got. Two down. Giants baseball is brought to you in part by the all new redesigned Toyota RAV4. It's here. And with up to 31 MPG, it's ready for adventure. From AT&T Park, Matt Kane given a one nothing lead after one inning, but running into immediately uh, immediate trouble here in the second when he walked Hanley Ramirez. He got ahead of him and then walked him. And later walked Matt Kemp, whom he also had gotten ahead of. And Kemp looking like he had hurt himself on a swing. But Kane could never throw another strike, so that's the erratic command that has cost Kane in this inning. There's a strike on the outside to lead off man Mark Ellis. Arizona hosting the Rockies, a couple of Western Division clubs in the desert. 2 0 Arizona, last of the fourth inning. The out of town scoreboard. On two. Nice fastball. That's that's been the best second stage hop he's had on a fastball. I think jumped in on the hands of Ellis. But here's where it gets a little more difficult with Ellis. I hope he makes as good of adjustments with two strikes as anybody on his Dodger team. He really toughens up, especially in scoring position. We've got two men in scoring position here. Camp at third, Uribe at second. There is Pence. Pence. Could have been worse. The Dodgers get two. Two to one LA after one and a half. BMW Centers. We go back to May 3rd, 2013. That's when Buster Posey hit a walk-off home run off of Ronald Belisario. And it was Posey's first career walk-off homer. And it sent everybody home with a smile on their face. Hit that against a Ronald Belisario of the Dodgers. And that was the night that the, the Giants won the game two to one. Clayton Kershaw was the Dodgers' starting pitcher in that game. Here is Ryu back to work and a curve in the dirt for ball one to Cole Gillespie just up in the minor leagues for the Giants. Juan Perez sent back to Fresno before the game. Gillespie, 29 years old with big league experience. Oh! As he takes a strike. He was hitting 280 at Fresno with nine homers, 31 batted in, and hitting better than 300 against left handed pitching. Off the inside, and it's 2 and 1. West Coast kid lives in San Diego now. 
Went to Oregon State. He was the co-captain of the 2006 NCAA National Championship teams. Two and two. First broke into the big leagues with the Diamondbacks. That was back in 2010. He's had 50 games in the majors with Arizona. 236 average. Had a very good spring for the Giants this, this spring in Scottsdale. Full count. Brandon Crawford is on deck. Giants are trailing two to one. There's a rebase throw. Still got the strong arm. One away. So Gillespie is retired. Now Brandon Crawford will come up. One of only two left-handed hitters in the Giants batting order against the left-hander Ryu. No strikes. Crawford actually last season when it was all said and done hit better against left handers than he did against righties. That's not the case so far this year. It's that sharply but foul. If you watch the, the motion from you, I mean, it, it, we always talk about when you get to the big league level, a lot of guys are really get compact with their motion. And a windup really becomes a step into their stretch position. And if you watch Ryu, I mean, it's basically what he's doing. I mean, it almost looks like he's in the stretch position at the start of his motion, but just a little step backwards. And that's as compact as you could get. But when you're compact, it's easier to repeat the stroke. You have less body to, to have to try and control. But this is really a, a very, very balanced take back. I bet his step back's only about six inches. Comes back up to a point of, of balance every time. Very relaxed. I mentioned he's a big guy, 6'2, 260. A swinging strike there for Crawford to make it two and two. Just off the outside. Full count. Ryu walked two Giants in the first inning. Giants had one infield hit that really was not so much a hit as it was a question of Ryu not. Throwing the ball well. We well, fought that one off to stay alive. Matt Kane is on deck. Three and two. I think we realized early on with Ryu, he's going to call his own game. I mean, a lot of times you see rookies come into this league and they don't shake off catchers very often. But this guy from the get go, I mean, he was shaking just to get the pitches and situational pitches that he wanted to throw. He's not you. Your normal rookie by any way, shape, or form. Back out of play into the second deck. Still three and two. Were you born in Incheon, South Korea? Seven year veteran with the Hanwha Eagles. Five times led the Korean League in strikeouts. And Crawford. Fouls this one into the second deck off to the left. Last year, Ryu for the Eagles had 220 strikeouts in only 183 innings. 98 wins in his seven years there, only 52 losses. Three and two the count. And that's high and foul. Falling off the, the breaking ball. Nice little battle between Ryu and, and Brandon Crawford. This is an outstanding at bat for Crawford. Yeah, this is the tenth or eleventh pitch of this battle right now. This will be number ten. Check swing. An appeal denied. Ball four for Crawford. So he got a walk there and he earned it. Check swing. Did he go? 
Not even close. And to me, that's a check swing. That's a big league check swing. But when they start that bad forward, just call it a strike. Just call it a swing. It'd be a lot easier. <laughs> he keeps the bat back like like Crawford did. Okay. Check swing. That's literally what a check swing is. Here's Matt Kane. Three hits, 30 at bats for the season. And it's ball one. Adrian Gonzalez came rushing in from first base when he, the pitch was being made. And Brandon Crawford had a lot of room to move around over there for a little bit. And we saw A.J. Ellis jumped up, ready to throw. Sharply hit to Uribe. There's one. Ellis back to first. And the inning is over. 2 to 1 LA. Puig coming up. Well, Matt Cain, the last five starts, 1.82 ERA. 174 opponents average, only six walks, 30 strikeouts, a 5 to 1 strikeout walk ratio. Those are good numbers, and that's our Papa Murphy's Who's Hot. Cain, who threw 32 pitches in that second inning, a couple of walks. And he'll get tested here again in the third. The Dodgers. Have three of their very best hitters and two of their hottest hitters coming up. Two of the hottest hitters on anybody's ball club right now. Now, Ciel Puig to lead off, and then Handley Ramirez, the cleanup man, is due up third. Puig grounded out to third, and he wasn't just a ground ball. <laughs> Technically, it was a ground ball, but he hit it very hard. One quick hop right to Pablo. That's past Pablo. A hanging breaking ball. Puig off and running. And Cole Gillespie gets it back in. A double for Puig. Well, it started him off with a breaking ball right at the belt. Had some big time hang on it. And for Pablo Sandoval, you can see how he really had no chance. Ball just by him to his backhand side. And once he gets it down the line, watch him go. Just an athletic stride, very quick. Adrian Gonzalez broke his bat, hitting a ground ball to first. And that change up in the dirt, a nice save by Buster Posey. One ball and no strikes. Gonzalez hitting over 300. 
He's had more at bats than any other Dodger except Andre Ethier against Kane. They both had 64 official at bats against Kane. And back to the change up again. And it's one and one. That's always been a tough pitch for Gonzalez against Kane. Gonzalez had 64 official at bats against Kane. He's hit four home runs and four doubles. Hitting well above 300 against him. Runner at second, nobody out. High fastball back to the screen. And another red hot hitter, Hanley Ramirez, on deck. And after Hanley Ramirez, it's Andre Ethier, who always seems to be red hot against Kane. Here's Hanley. And Ethier in the hole. Two to one LA. And they're threatening again here in the third right away on the leadoff double by Puig. Off the outside. Trying to cut the outside corner with a little fastball with a cut grip. That's how Puig came into the game hitting 430. Now he's one for two, so that's going up a little bit. And 116 official the bats. He now has eight doubles, a triple, and eight homers. His slugging percentage is over 700. And the change up. Again, Posey called upon to make a save. Three and two. Well, this becomes a big pitch. It was a, it was a stress inning for Kane in the second inning. And with that leadoff double by Puig, all of a sudden it becomes a stressful inning here. A stressful inning here again in the third. When at second base, less than two outs, you're pitching for the strikeout. And that's what Kane's pitching for right now. This is a big pitch. Three and two. Now Kane steps off the slab. He has struck out Gonzalez in fully 25% of his official at bats against King. Nobody covering. King. Not just spinning though and looking it back, but he gave the full Monty bluff there. He's be setting up the changeup, making Gonzalez wave a little bit, ice him down, make him a little more jumpy. And so it goes for Kane right now. The shot, this is not what we're used to seeing. That's his third walk already. He walked two in the second. In his last five starts, he's walked six total. And tonight, he went to the three. But it's how he's walked the two. He's had a couple of walks where he's been way ahead of hitters. One, two. And all of a sudden, it goes to a walk. And the, and the takes are pretty easy. They're not that close to the strike zone. Not teasers. Hanley Ramirez. He was one of those behind the count that came back and drew a walk. That started the two run second inning rally. Hitting 404 in his 29 games this year and 483 in the last 15 of them. And ball no strikes. It is not there for him right now. And that's a big weapon. And he can't get that over. It's a pitch you really can't use because. Most changeups are by Kane. He looked over fastball counts. 1 0, 2 0. And if you miss in those counts, now you're really in trouble. Two men on, nobody out, and a one ball, no strike count to the red hot Ramirez. And out of play. Second deck. One ball, one strike. The Kane right now. He, other than the fastball, it's hard for him to count on anything in his repertoire. Ball and a strike to count. Puig who hit the hanging breaking ball to start the inning for a double. And Dallas then walked two men on. A ball and a strike to Handley Ramirez. King will try it again. Popped up, foul, and that is out of play. And that was away from the intended location. And they're setting that target up on the outside corner. That glove's right there, knee high to Ramirez. And that thing is going up and in on the inside corner above the hands. 
So when you're missing like that, it usually means you're flying that front side. You're dragging your arm. And when you drag your arm, you hang breaking balls and you miss up a lot. And that's not where you want to miss to a hot hitter. And Henley Ramirez has considerable power. Half swing and just fouled. Brandon Bell was playing well wide of the first baseline there. So it's still one ball, two strikes. Almost an excuse me double, which would have probably well, would have at least scored one. It's all as at first base average speed at best. But great speed with Puig at second base. You see the Giants outfield kind of bunched up towards center for you. Yeah, protecting the gaps and giving the lines. One and two to count. Still nobody out. And again, foul right past Davy Lopes, the first base coach. Yeah, that was a pitch right to the glove, though. They set that target on the inside. They wanted to have that front door cutter kind of give the illusion to the eye of the hitter. They set up the inside corner, and that is right exactly where they wanted to throw that thing. He's a bunch of the mirrors. He's a middle of the way guy. You can pitch him in. So Ramirez fought off the tough pitch. One and two. Right up the middle. And Puig with that great speed will score easily. Gonzalez to second, and it's three to one LA. Location, especially ahead the count like that. And that's going to bring David Getty out again. Watch this sit up inside this goes right out over the middle. And for a hot hitter, that's just a mistake you can't make. Ahead the count and say, My mistake is if I miss this, I want to miss off the plate in, not out over the plate, not at the belt. Quick scoring easily with his great speed. And Rigetti. On the 30th anniversary of his no hitter as a New York Yankee at Yankee Stadium. July the 4th. Actually, it's the day after the anniversary of his no hitter. He pitched a no hitter against the Boston Red Sox. He struck out future Hall of Famer Wade Boggs for the final out. And the telecast was featuring the Hall of Fame broadcaster, the legendary voice of the Yankees, Mel Allen. Who by that time was only doing selected games of play by play for the Yanks, but Dave Rigetti had quite the showcase on the 4th of July, 1983. And here it is Boggs at the plate. Good slider. <laughs> and that's, I don't know how many pitches he threw in that thing, but that's as quality a slider as you can throw. Boggs is not an easy guy to strike out. Boggs, who routinely would walk 110, 120 times and get 200 something hits and have close to 700 plate appearances, that year he struck out 36 times. So there were only 35 others. 685 plate appearances he had that year. So even if you hadn't seen it for yourself, you would have just known that he must have had a great slider if he struck out Wade Boggs with it to end his no hitter. Well, yeah, I mean that was probably the fourth time the Boggs was seeing him. So in order to get a swing through strike three in the last pitch of the game, that's pretty special. Especially Boggs. when it's a no hitter. Boggs had generally been the Red Sox leadoff man, even though he was not a fast runner per se. He just got on base a million times every year. Andre Ethier in the dirt. Again, the changeup is just not there for him. George Contos up in the Giants bullpen. And only in the third inning, but Kane has already thrown 56 pitches. He has not retired anybody in this inning. And he's trailing three to one. 32 pitch second inning. This will be his 18th pitch of the third inning where he has nobody out. Seven of the ten men he's faced in these last two innings have reached base against him. And that's 
a foul off the left field line. When you're out there and, and you're, you're not having much success with a pitch that has been your money pitch the last five weeks, and what do you do? Well, you make adjustments and you do it on every pitch. And that's all it is, is just keep making adjustments, just keep trying to make that pitch, trying to get that ground ball you're looking for to get two outs, minimize the damage. And here against a guy who has been tormenting him over the years, Andre Ethier. The cutter in under the hands there. Fouled and still two and two. Ethier pulled one right past the first base bag and down the right field line. To really accelerate that rally in the second inning. Ramirez had walked to lead off the inning and then Ethier immediately doubled him to third. And eventually they would both score on Uribe's base hit. Now the run is home here. 3-1 LA. Pop fly. Crawford out. And Gillespie. And then it's the hold. Dodgers here tomorrow and Sunday as well. Then the New York Mets come in. And uh, Monday, July the 8th, and Tuesday the 9th are both 7-15 starts. That Monday matchup, by the way, that is young Matt Harvey who is setting the league on fire. He may be the all-star game starting pitcher. And he'll be up against Tim Let's go on Monday night. And some uh, good seats still available for that Tuesday night game. A day game on Wednesday the 10th. Your only chance to see the Mets at AT&T Park this year, sfgiants.com. Well, we saw Matt Kemp seem to injure himself, swinging and missing at a pitch in the second inning. He is not batting here. Carl Crawford, just back from the disabled list, comes up instead. Crawford, who had had a hamstring problem, just activated from the DL before this game, hitting 301. Before he got hurt, he's two for seven against Matt Kane, left handed hitter, batting with two men on and one man out. Two and oh. The right handed hitting A.J. Ellis is on deck. Well, you, you know, you really can't explain it. You're in such a groove as a pitcher, and I mean, he's just been automatic to target here the last five, six starts. Tonight, Kane just cannot count on any pitch to the mid. Three and zero. Oh. Seven pitches in the first, then a 32 pitch ordeal in the second, and with only one out here in the third, already 23 more. 62 pitches already for Kane. Still in the third. And that's a four pitch walk to Crawford. And the bases are loaded. This was how Matt Kemp displayed pain in his last time up there. And as soon as he had the back swing, and his shoulder sort of hyperextended. There was a subluxation, subluxation I think, that it really caused him to. Some discomfort. It may have been a, a nerve pinch, who knows, but obviously uncomfortable enough to continue. So it was nice to be able to have a call of Crawford off the bench to take your place. AJ Ellis with a swinging strike. Good slider there. That's a question for the Dodgers. Now that Crawford is back, who's going to play? You got three outfield spots. And now four outfielders. Yes, Yell Puig is not going anywhere. I'd say he's going to play every day. What do you think? Now, if he drops below 430, maybe you give him a day off. That's a called strike two. And those two breaking balls are absolutely spot on location wise. Yeah, Yasiel Puig has definitely come into this league and opened some eyes. 6'3, 245 pounder. One and two. Ellis fouled out to Hunter Pence, the right fielder. Shallow right field. Back in the second inning.
Gonzalez at third base. Hanley Ramirez at second. Carl Crawford at first. Ramirez and Crawford both generally fast runners, but both coming back from hamstring injuries. Again, just pulling out way too quick with that front side, dragging the arm. They set that target outside corner, and the thing goes way up and in. It's not an easy guy to catch right now. Normally, Kane is catching with a shower shoe. Put your glove up, he's going to hit it with whatever he's throwing. Has not been that case tonight. Has not been a comfortable night for Posey behind the plate. Two and two. Up the middle, base hit. Gonzalez scores. Hanley Ramirez will stop at third as Torres hits the cutoff man. Belt with the throw. Four to one, LA. It's just not getting better for Matt Kane, who had been ahead of AJ Ellis, but could not put him away. Well, that's the contact right now. Ochi's signaling to Kane. You all right? Should I come get you? I mean, that last location was just a flat out miss, and he does not miss like that out over the plate when he's right. And here is Uribe. Pitch number 69 in the first three innings coming up. And the change up in the dirt. Uribe hit a two run single to left field in the second inning. The Dodgers threatening to jump way ahead early on, already leading four to one. Bases loaded, only one out. The infield looking for a double play. A ball and a strike. Kane, after a 32 pitch second inning, is about to throw number 32 here in the third inning again. Two and one. Now it looks like the slider really is, is the one pitch that he can rely on just to get in the strike zone to a quality location. He got last one out there and the rebate disciplined. Let it go. A mighty cut by Uribe. Back to the screen. Two and two. And Uribe, although he's only hit four home runs in 160 official at bats, the Giants know full well. His power. He had a lot of home runs while here. Two and two the count. Three men on. The foul off the glove of Posey. Still two and two. Yeah, he drove that location right through the glove, too. That was one of the few fastballs this inning where he really had good power behind it. There's the pitcher, Ryu, on deck. Three and two. A lot of squirming in the seats here. It's the fifth three-two count that Kane has had. And I'm shocked that it's that few. Seems like everybody's had a three-two count. Four walks on the night, one strikeout. A 32 pitch inning now. Pitch number 36 in the very next inning. Gillespie. They'll have to go chase it and. These Dodgers can run for a while. Ramirez, Crawford, and here comes A.J. Ellis. Uribe ends up at third. It is seven to one, L.A. And Matt Kane, 75 pitches. Which uh, will quite often for Kane be five or six innings of work. He departs with only one out in the second inning. 
Seven to one Dodgers. And a new pitcher coming in. Dodge. Visit Dodge.com or your Bay Area dealer today. With Mike Kruko, I'm John Miller. And uh, astonishingly, the Dodgers have knocked out Matt Kane, who pitched only two and a third innings, and have a seven to one lead. Kane's had a, a handful of games this year that would remind you in some ways of this one, in other ways, not, though. He had two games against the Cardinals, where the Cardinals put up huge innings against him, never ending innings. But even those, there was a little bit of a difference, at least in the last one, in that Kane rebounded from a seven run inning. And in five other innings, they never put on a, a base runner against him. This time, he just could not get out of that third inning. And Contos misses inside with the slider to Ryu, the pitcher. Well, Ten base runners and two and a third for Kane. Certainly not something we are accustomed to seeing from him. This game's not always going to be fair to you. And it'll be eight to one. As Pins tries to throw out Ryu at first. Almost not quite. His eighth hit of the year in 33 at bats, his fourth RBI. Well, he had an idea. <laughs> One thing, and if you're a pitcher and you think you're going to lope down the line on a clean line drive to Hunter Pitts, think again. Well, that run is charged to Matt Kane as well. Lead off man Mark Ellis, the ninth batter of the inning. And it's on one. That came eight runs on six hits allowed in two and a third innings. He had that game in Colorado back in mid May where he gave up three home runs in the first three innings and six runs. That ball is hit very well. But Gillespie, not near the 382 marker. And so far, Kantos is not fooling anybody. So two down in the inning. And yes, Yell Puig, who led off the inning, will come up again. He started the inning with a double. I think the league is still trying to figure out how to pitch this game. And obviously hitting 431, and they're not really doing a whole lot of figuring out on him. Chase the slider, on one. 
But you know, you, you watch him chase a slide and you think, all right, there's the Achilles heel. And then you throw two more and he spits on it. Well, his first at bat, he did that, right? Yeah. Keen threw him one, he swung out, threw him another one. No, nothing. So being able to make those type of adjustments from pitch to pitch within an at bat, I mean, that's a strength. That's what a veteran hitter does, not a, not a rookie. Ryu, the runner at first, two down. Way outside. Saved by Posey. A ball and a strike. Contos in long relief for the Giants. I started to mention when, when Kane gave up the six runs at Colorado in three innings, he took the Giants into the seventh inning of that game without ever allowing another base runner. He had a, a similar experience in St. Louis after they put seven on the board against him early on. Up and in with a fastball, and it's two and one. There have been a handful of games this year where he's really not been sharp and he's been roughed up. But this one, I think the difference in this one was that the, the pitch count just grew and grew and grew. 32 pitches in one inning, 36 in the next. When's the last time you ever saw that? I mean, you don't see that from anybody, much less Matt Cain. Well, you just don't. Well, you can't you can't explain it. You know, chances are he felt pretty good in the bullpen. And you go out there between the lines and all of a sudden, look what shows up or doesn't show up. If you, if you could figure it out, I mean, this game would be easy, and it's far from easy. And I don't care who you are. I mean, even the great ones. You go out there, and every once in a while, the game is just going to flat out humble you. And it has done that tonight to Matt Cain. Six hits, four walks, eight earned runs. Two and two the count with two down. Did he swing? No. Mm. Rondazzo didn't think so. Three and two. I'm afraid this is going to look like a swing here. Yeah, I can see what Rondazzo saw. Rondazzo's pretty good up by it. There goes Ryu from first base. The slider. Pablo. And he got him. As always, Puig racing up that line. Six runs in the inning for the Dodgers. On camera, shoot, share, shoot in HD, shoot and share in real time. Go to ioncamera.com for more information. In his minor league career, did you know that Pablo Sandoval played more games as a catcher than he did as either a first or third baseman? 
How about that? That's a fun fact. We're looking for some fun facts, baby. <laughs> if you've got some more of those, uh, bring them on. Carl Crawford, after pinch hitting for Kemp, stays in to play left field. And Andre Ethier has moved from left field over to center field for L.A. There's Ethier, number 16. Ethier did a lot of playing in center field while Kemp was out. And Don Mattingly said he really liked what he saw from him out there, that he was kind of a lifesaver because they it's such an, a key position. And, and Ethier covered a lot of ground out there in center field. Uh, I think he definitely increases marketability. You talk about the log jam they're going to have with outfielders there if everybody gets healthy. And some people in L.A. have suggested that they may move Ethier. And what he has done at center field defensively has definitely made his stock go up. A ball and a strike to Andres Torres, who got an infield to hit. A ball that was picked up by... Ryu, but then he made a poor throw to first. Chasing that curveball. One and two the count. And I think this is a big inning, too, for the Giants. I think that, you know, you, you got the top of the lineup up. You've had it at bat against Ryu. You've got a game plan now. You're down seven runs. You need to make some noise. The only good thing about this is it's just this third inning. You've got time to make it up. Strike three call to the inside corner. Well, it's not a good start swinging at the ball and taking the strike. But Torres is gone. And now Scudero will come up. Scudero walked his first time. One ball and no strikes. Ryu and walked three in the first two innings. It was his second strikeout of the game. Base hit. This is a guy that the Giants have been counting on who has been delivering, except not lately on the road trip. Scudero was just three for 26. Here comes Pablo Sandoval. Pablo popped up the second his first time. First of a three-game series here. Tomorrow's game, which will be televised by the Fox Network, a 4:15 start. Madison Bumgarner for the Giants against Stephen Fife. Along the right field line, back into the corner is Puig. Gets off the archway, bouncing back toward the infield. He overran the ball, but Scudero had already stopped at third. Well, this is what the Giants have been waiting for. And Pablo Sandoval goes to a very good pitch location-wise and drives it, almost knocks it out of here. Remember, we've only seen 33 home runs hit to right field by right-handed hitters since this ballpark opened up in 2000. And watch this throw. Dude, all the way to plate on a fly. It's a strike. It's one hard. You really have to think twice about it. When you're down by seven runs by challenging him. Tim Flannery at third base. I think he opted wisely. Buster Posey. One out, runners at second and third. Ball one. Buster walked his first time. And I watched the throw. Just really not a lot of movement going into it. Just get up and wing it to the plate. <laughs> He's a specimen, folks. To an out to Buster with Pence on deck. For Pablo, who had had one hit in his last 31 at bats, hits one into one of the archways out there in the Willie Mays wall in right field. A strike call to the inside. Good pitch, cut a fastball there, 2 0, right in that inside corner. Buster now three hits, eight at bats, plus three walks against Ryu this year.
popped up. And him out front on an off speed pitch. Out number two. Plenty has been the Giants' most reliable hitter. But not this time. Well, maybe Hunter Pitts could pick him up. But this becomes a very, very important bat in this game. You're down seven runs, and you just have your, your money guy pop up and run a third base in less than two outs. You're thinking bad thoughts in that dugout, and you can eliminate all those bad thoughts with a base hit here. Pence got an RBI with a ground ball back in the first inning. Pop up. Out of play as Gonzalez goes over into a, uh, a section of Dodger fans there. All on the count. Eight to one. The Dodgers are leading with one out of the inning. Scudero hit a single to left. Pablo doubled to right field. Now a two down. And that is in there for a called strike two. Cut that fastball on that inside corner. Same pitch he threw on the 2 0 count to Posey. And that's how you establish inside. Throw a strike with a fastball. That went up out of the strike zone. Fouled back and out of play. Still 0 2. Base hit can be in a couple of runs here. Brandon Belt on deck. And that's the inning. Strike three call on the inside. Eight to one LA after three. Visit insure.earthquakeauthority.com to learn more. Get earthquake insurance. May the 4th, the Giants and the Dodgers in this ballpark a couple of months ago. And last of the ninth inning, Guillermo Quiroz against Brandon League. Goodbye and game over. The Giants had another walk off home run for the second night in a row. That was in the 10th inning. And the Giants, that was a wild night. The Giants won that game 10 to 9. A game where the Dodgers had a seven run fifth inning. Tonight, they've had a six run third inning and have an eight to one lead. Giants never had that kind of a deficit despite the Dodgers' huge fifth inning against, most of it was against Ryan Vogelsong, in fact, that night in May, but the Giants ended up. With a win. Gregor Blanco has come in to play center field for the Giants, and uh, Andres Torres is out.
so we'll uh, try to get word from the uh, Giants clubhouse. Pens in right field. And Gonzalez is gone on one pitch. Yeah, that's a changeup. And that, that, I think, is the future for Contos. That is such a good pitch. It will totally neutralize some left handed bats. Well, for comprehensive coverage of everything orange and black, check out pregame live and postgame live before and after every Giants telecast on Comcast Sportsnet, authentic Bay Area sports. Cleanup man Hanley Ramirez, who was walked and had an RBI single. That's one of the best changeups I've seen Contos throw. Fastball for a strike to the outside. Well, it could be a good night to to really use it and see what he can do, see what he thinks of it. Well, I mean, he's really been a two-pitch guy and, and, and really not a guy that has a lot of confidence in the fastball. He tries to shave the, the, the strike zone with that fastball. When he goes into it, has the challenge. It's always with the slider. Foul ball. And his slider is a great slider. I mean, it's, it's a bread and butter, but he has to be able to command other, other movements. He has to understand that two seam fastball. The changeup is going to be a great pitch for him against left handed hitters. You get up here, you, you cannot be afraid to experiment with movement. Watch how guys are getting people out. Learn that movement. Makes you better. One and two. When you say learn the movement, you well, mean, what do you mean? Like a fastball, uh, there's two types of fastball. Four seam fastball, which has from a right handed pitcher to a right handed hitter, will have movement that is a little bit of a cut that just sort of leaks away, or it can be straight to a right handed hitter. Base hit. Family Ramirez. He just won't cool down. Well, that's the kind of hit you get when you're hot. You know, it's a ground ball that finds a hole. But you can tell he is hot. Now, this is a two strike count. That ball is not a hanger. It's off the plate at the knees. Just goes out. Throw the bat head right back up the middle. Get yourself a big, big knock. That's his 30th hit in his 16 game hitting streak. 30 hits, 60 at bats. Andre Ethier now, who has hit a double and flied out to shadow left center. Eight to one, the Dodgers are leading. So you mean the, the pitcher learned the movement that he's got or that he can get with different grips, that sort of thing? Well, you have, like that last pitch you threw is a two seam fastball. That has movement that runs away from the left hander. I and mean, that's what you should pitch when you're pitching for a ground ball, which is what he's pitching for. Knee high movement that's got a little sink and a good hard slider. Those are your ground ball pitches. There's the slider. Pitchers come up with cutters. They're, they're fastballs that aren't quite as hard as a four seam fastball, but they have a little three or four inch slide that runs flat on its break. You get a guy who's got a little loop in the swing, like Ethier, who's got a little bit of an uppercut, you can put that cut right at the belt. It's understanding swing type and putting movement to beat that swing type. Off the inside. Two and one. And then, of course, your curveball is a different type of break from a slider. And you can do the same types of movement that you have on your fastball, and you can do that with the changeup. Throw your changeup with a two seam grip or a four seam grip. Changes the look of the pitch in the eye of the hitter. Off the outside. Three and one. Because if you're a pitcher, you're unless you've got exceptional stuff. Two pitches, this is not enough. And that's primarily what we have seen in the past from Contos. The two pitches. Three and one. There's Pence. In a little bit now. And Ramirez will get back to first. Ethier is gone. Two down. And Carl Crawford will come up. Well, we watch what happened with Homer Bailey. I first saw Homer Bailey come up with the Cincinnati Reds, and he was a four seam fastball, big curveball guy, maybe a slider. He added a changeup, he added a, a cutter, he learned a two seam fastball. Now he's got six different types of movement, and he thinks he's, and he's never backed into a corner. He never gets into a predictable 
situation where he has to give into a hitter and give him something he's looking for. Right back to Contos with the slider, and the inning is over. The single by Ramirez, and nothing more. Eight to one, LA. Brandon Belt coming up. And stars of tomorrow Xfinity your home for the most live sports Kyle Crick has lighted up They had an injury earlier to an oblique muscle he's back healthy now at San Jose Three stars since coming back from the oblique injury He's throwing 15 innings. He struck out 28 with five walks So 15 base runners in those 15 innings three earned runs The big guy 6'4, 220 pounder throws hard The 49th overall pick two years ago. So Kyle Crick That's a guy we will see here someday Brandon Bell leads off last of the fourth for the Giants against Ryu and strike one call Belt struck out his first time three strikeouts for Ryu a ball and a strike Giants are going to get some action going in their bullpen as the pitcher Contos is due up fourth in this inning Mike kick the young lefty and start the throw. And two times he's got up above the hands of that fastball. He struck it out with that pitch in his first at bat. That's a frustrating pitch because you see it so well. And you get after it, you pull the trigger, you think, and I got this one, and it goes right above your hands, and it is a frustrating pitch for big league hitters. And you go right back up there again. And, and, you, know, you go back in and you look at the pitch. And he said, what am I doing swinging at a pitch out of the strike zone? But boy, it just looks so big in that batter's box. Hard to lay off. Let's go two and two to Brandon Bell. Gillespie just up from Fresno today on deck. Brandon Crawford you up third in the inning. Arizona, meanwhile, with a 3 0 lead over the Rockies in the last of the seventh. And rookie Tyler Skaggs just brought up from the minor leagues today by Arizona has pitched two hit shutout baseball for seven innings in that game for the D backs. Hamley Ramirez, he's got it. Brandon Bell is over two. Well, swing to the fences with the new home run derby mobile game from MLB.com. Features all 24 home run derby champ uh, competitors from 2010, 11, and 12. And it's available on iPhone and iPad. Download MLB.com's Home Run Derby game. It's for free. And you can do it today. Cole Gillespie. Why do you why do you bring that 
up now. The Home Run Derby, the Home Run Derby game on the app. Why would you bring that up now? Well, just to inspire these guys. <laughs> Play a little Home Run Derby here against Ryu. That'd be good. So oh, curveball missing. One and one. Gillespie had nine home runs for Fresno. He's got some pop. Mark Ellis and two men going. Well, the NBC Bay Area investigative unit led by Tony Kovalesk. Who are they? Well, they're an award winning team of 14 journalists dedicated to holding the powerful accountable. The investigative unit on NBC Bay Area. We investigate. So, if Tony Kovalesk comes to your door, you're pretty much done. I well, think could take it both ways. Pretty much done, but you must be really powerful. <laughs> there you go. Brandon Crawford. And it's 0 1. Hasn't been to our door yet. Crawford walked his first time. Crawford gave Ryu quite a battle back in the second inning. Just off the outside of the fastball. One ball and one strike. Eight to one Dodgers were in the last of the fourth inning. Off the outside, two and one. Here is Joaquin Arias with the pitcher. Contos do up next. Arias would apparently be the pinch hitter if Crawford could keep the inning going here. That's a called strike went right back to the same pitch. This one in the zone. Two and two. Padres lost to the Nationals in Washington today. That's a foul ball. Gio Gonzalez got the win for Washington over Cashman. Carlos Quentin and Chase Headley hit home runs for the Padres. They lost the game. The Padres have lost seven in a row. Almost the entire division except for the Dodgers was on a losing streak as of a couple of days ago. A curveball handled by Mark Ellis. And the Giants go down in order. On to the fifth inning. A.J. Ellis, you up. Eight to one, L.A. night brought to you by Dodge visit uh, visit dodge.com or your Bay Area dealer today Tigers they got a shutout tonight over the Cleveland Indians Porcello over Masterson Yankees got two in the bottom of the ninth at Yankee Stadium to come from behind for a 3-2 win over the Orioles the Blue Jays shut out the twins in Canada 
Danny Bautista is uh, 20th home run and uh, eight to three the Rays over the White Sox in Florida here the news has been all bad for the Giants tonight trailing eight to one Matt Kane knocked out early during a six run Dodger third inning that put them ahead eight to one AJ Ellis who knocked in a run with a single in that inning is one for two in the game and the count is 2 0 facing George Cantos here. By the way, uh, Jose Bautista hit that home run for the Blue Jays. Daniel Bautista was a, uh, a little known player who played several years ago and retired. Well, I like him. <laughs> 2 and 1. Thanks for bringing him up. I hadn't thought of him in a while. <laughs> and my apologies to Jose Bautista, who's become one of the great home run hitters in the game. Now, this is a big week for baseball. I mean, you're going to have the all-star team's name, and then they're going to tell who the home run derby contestants are going to be. It's always a great month for baseball in July before we go into the dog days. Yeah. And it's a walk. So A.J. Ellis is aboard. Here's some other out-of-town scores from the American League ballparks, the Texas Rangers. Clobbered the Astros in the All Texas matchup. Beltre, Cruz, and Murphy all hit home runs for the Rangers. Ten to five over the Astros. The Athletics they just keep right on rolling. And although the Kansas City's got three in the bottom of the ninth, the A's won it six to three. And Tommy Malone had a shutout into the ninth inning of that game. Balfour finally came on to get the save. And the Red Sox and Angels playing in Anaheim, two to two, in the sixth inning down there. Kyle Kendrick a home run for the Angels. Uribe. Now Uribe, by the way, the, apparently the official score gave him credit for a double and two RBIs in the second inning. Not a single with a throw to third, but rather a double. Generous call. And then he hit a three-run triple in the third inning. He's had five RBIs in this game against his old team. And I think this is without question his best game against the Giants. Since he left him. Brandon Bell. And Uribe is retired for the first time tonight. By the way, Uribe's all time personal record for RBIs in a game seven against the Cleveland Indians, when, or uh, I beg your pardon, against the Montreal Expos. It was an interleague game when he was with the Chicago White Sox before he became a Giant, and long before he became a Dodger. Here is Ryu who has struck out and singled home a run. He was the first man faced by Contos and he ripped a single to right to knock in the Dodgers eighth run. He shows bunt. Takes a strike. Kick him. Heating up in the Giants bullpen. Gamer babes are here. Oh, yeah. Lots of good attitude in that group. If you're a gamer, babe, it pays to advertise it. Yeah, I, I agree. And tell us where you're from. We've seen gamer babes from Germany, from South Africa, from Australia, from Saskatoon. There's no yawning in baseball, buddy. Sorry. You know, I, I've been to Saskatoon. Are there gamer babes up there? Yeah. Well, there you go. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Although when I was up there, it was in the winter. It was 40 below zero. <laughs> and you know, I didn't learn about so much about Gamer Babes in Saskatoon, but I learned that at 40 below zero, yeah. Fahrenheit meets Celsius. Really? It's 40 below in both. So, I didn't know that. So you learn stuff. You turn into our telecast. You get. To, it's not just baseball. You get some education. Yeah. I'm impressed. So two down, a sacrifice bunt for Ryu. The leadoff man, Mark Ellis, will come up. Kanto scheduled to lead off in the last of the fifth inning, so kick him, getting ready. Chance for, uh, I'm thinking, pinch hit for him. One ball and no strikes. 
Arizona has lengthened its lead over the Rockies to five to nothing at the end of seven. You mentioned all the things that are upcoming. Bruce Bochy, he's had a very busy couple of days on the flight back from Cincinnati last evening and again this morning. Along the right field line, twisting back into the crowd out of play. One ball and one strike. Bochi got all the information. He actually knows who the starters were voted in by the fans for the National League. And he knows the backups who've been voted in by the players themselves and however many number of pitchers that the, the players vote in. So he knows all of that. And he said it leaves 10 players to be determined by him. Except it's not really 10. That's foul off to the right. One of those will be determined by the fans after all the names are announced. There'll be five. He actually has to turn in five names for that. Only one of which will be voted in by the fans to be the, the final man on the roster. And three teams have did not have anybody elected by the fans or the players. And those teams have to be represented by a player. So he's going to have to pick one player from each of those three teams. So he has basically about six calls on, on players that he will add to the team himself. Other than the, the mandatory players that he, that he must add from the from each team so that they'll all be represented. And he said it's not very easy. He's been asked, especially when the Giants were in L.A. last week, about a million times about Yasiel Puig. Would he answer? Would he ask Puig to the All-Star game? And Bochi in L.A. candidly said he was leaning against it at that time. Good slider for the strikeout. That's good night. George Campos. Two and a third. Couple of hits allowed. It's eight to one LA. Last for the fifth inning. Jeep dealer visit jeep.com the pirates they just keep right on rolling six to two over the cubs this afternoon at wrigley padres lost to the nats eight to five phillies five to four over atlanta 10th win of the year for cliff lee and the mariners in cincinnati four to two beat the reds beat mike leak and the reds at the great american ballpark the mets the former Giants farmhand Zach Wheeler got the win in Milwaukee 12 to 5 there Cardinals 4 to 1 over the Miami Marlins and the D-backs now have a 5 nothing lead over Colorado last of the eighth inning in Arizona D-backs who won a couple of very long games in New York to finish up their road trip so they've been losing night after night here is Tony Abreu and Abreu takes ball one outside. Pinch hitting for George Contos. Abreu, who's hit extremely well right handed. 
and a high pop up. Mark Ellis out. Twig in. Mark Ellis. One away. Well, get up to the minute. The minute you're up with today in the Bay. See breaking news, your weather forecast, and real time traffic watch today in the Bay. Weekdays starting at 4.30 a.m. Right here on NBC Bay Area. What are you doing at 4.30 a.m. in the morning? That's what I'm doing. As soon as you call me and get me up. Okay. Monday, I'll be calling you. Here's a foul off to the left. <laughs> you should have said that. <laughs> it would be worth it just to have, just to hear that you were actually up at 4.30. <laughs> Blanco up for the first time. We don't know why Blanco was in and Torres was out going into the fourth inning. Torres had had a couple of at bats. He got called out on strikes in the third inning and then did not go onto the field in the fourth inning. So Blanco grounds out two down. And here's Marco Scudero. Scudero has walked and singled against Ryu. Just a bit low. And that is down and in. 2-0 oh the count. By the way, yes, Yel Puig will be leading it off for L.A. In the sixth inning, the, the next half inning. There he is. Tonight, Puig has grounded out, doubled, and grounded out again. Even the ground outs are, are really exciting. <laughs> well, uh, you're right. I mean, he hits a one hop top spin bullet, and he, he gets thrown out by a step at first base. And that was a ground ball he hit the third base. Sandoval has got a great arm. Very fast, and he he does everything at full speed no matter what and sometimes he just keeps on doing it we, we saw him hit a single in la lap i mean a routine single to left field the fielder came in picked it up and Puig just kept on going and the left fielder threw him out it's, i don't think he ever actually reached second base <laughs> Paul was waiting for him there and well that's kind of what happens when you're in the little league, right you get going you can't stop you go when somebody tags you out he had a couple of moments like that when the Giants were in L.A. Very exciting, dynamic, young talent. Yasiel Puig. Off the foot. Three and two to Scudero. I remember in spring training, he was the talk of the Cactus League. Puig was hitting, what did he hit, about 540 or something yeah, in spring over, training. And it was a hard 540. Home runs to right field. His batting practice ridiculous. Popped up foul. AJ Ellis comes back and he's got it. That's the kind of that has been for the Giants. Gasiel Puig coming up.
Puig will lead off for LA. Here in the sixth inning, the Giants have a new pitcher, Mike Kickham, who had a start against the Dodgers in Dodger Stadium last week. He faced Puig. Fastball in. One ball and no strikes. Yeah, we saw no 90s fastball. Big curveball. He's got a slider changeup. He's got four good pitches. Abreu stays in the game. He's at second base. The slider down and away. Two and oh. He, by the way, he faced Puig three times in that game. Yeah. 0 for three. Puig flied out twice and struck out the last time he saw him. Unfortunately for Kickham, although he struck out Puig in that sixth inning. He never got anybody else out in that inning. Dodgers ended up scoring four runs, six total. Not this time. It's a four-pitch walk, and Puig has this reputation of swinging at everything. Didn't swing at anything there. Well, time now for our right choice. It's brought to you by Ford. Need some help at the pump? Test drive an efficient new Ford today. It's the right choice for California. October 3rd, 1982, Joe Morgan. Hit a three-run shot of Terry Forrest, the Dodgers left-handed, to give the Giants the lead in the seventh inning, and they would win that ball game five to two, and the Dodgers' year would be over. That was uh, David Glass, who was at the microphone. Giants eliminated the Dodgers from pennant contention. The team that won the division that year, the National League West, was managed by a man who's here tonight, Joe Torrey. And uh, so, in effect, Joe Torrey and the Atlanta Braves were the beneficiaries of that home run. Joe Morgan had a, a great year for the Giants. And they really surprised a lot of people by even being in pennant contention back in 82. Oh, the fastball to strike out Adrian Gonzalez. So four straight balls to walk through. And here, a three pitch see ya. Good morning, good afternoon, and here's good night. Fastball, grab some fine heat. So that'll give Mr. Pick a little confidence. I mentioned the three starts that Kickham has had all on the road. This is the first time he's ever been able to wear the home creams and pitch here in front of 41,000 faithful. The red hot Hanley Ramirez now has had two more hits in this game plus a walk. And he was off balance there, fouling one back into the crowd. Strike one. Hanley not often off balance these days. 16 game hitting streak and with his two hits tonight 30 hits and a 500 batting average during the hitting streak of course he's hitting 418 overall Puig like it's also his 30th game just as it is for Puig a ball and a strike you know really if I was handling Ramirez you know, his remember his family or whatever his agent if they're talking Puig, I want him to talk Hanley for the All-Star team. Played just the same number of games, hitting just about exactly the same. With a much longer big league career. Well, I think you make a good point. But I think right now Ramirez is enjoying being kind of out of the limelight. Let Mr. Puig have his way. Let him take the headlines. Yeah, I think so, too. They Puig, when he first got up, he was doing amazing things every night. But the Dodgers weren't winning every night. They had a losing record even after Puig arrived for a while. But uh, Hanley Ramirez got back. And then more recently, Kemp has gotten back. That's deep into center field. Way back there, and Blanco. Puig was all the way at second base, and he sprints back to first. Well, one thing that Vince Kelly said about Puig, the first couple of games that he came up to the big leagues with the reputation of being a five-tool guy, he showed it right away. He showed it with the power. He showed it with opposite field power. He was hitting for an average. He was stealing bases. 
and then he showed it with the arm. Watch this throw to first base. This ended things. That's the way the game ended right there. And that wasn't his best throw. So right away, everybody in the National League West was saying, who is this guy? And he was worth watching. Andre Ethier, ball one from Kicken. Ethier has doubled and twice flied out. He's one for three. Eight to one LA. We're in the sixth inning. Twig at first. Two down. Well, what do they say that he hit his first four homers in his first week in the big leagues were all on different pitches and to different fields. That's an infield hit for Ethier, and Puig made sure that Crawford had no other option but throwing to first as he sprinted into second. Now one thing you, you do as a middle infielder, you check the guy at first base, you know what type of speed he has. So as soon as this thing went to his backhand, Crawford's thinking first base. And I don't think he ever really got a, a good grip on the ball as he got his arm to throw initially because he had to regrip just a little bit of a lock there. There's the speed you're talking about from Twig. But Crawford knew before he even got the ball that there was not going to be, be a play at second. And you have to do that. You, you have to anticipate those things. There's Carl Crawford in the spot that Kemp was in. When the game began, one ball, one strike to Crawford. Crawford just back from the disabled list today. They sent Scott Van Slyke back to the minor leagues to make room for him. Kemp ended up walking in the second inning. But before he walked, he had a swing and a miss and seemed to be in pain with his left shoulder. Stayed in, and then Kane could not throw him another strike. He ended up walking, but he did. After he played the field in the last of the second inning, he did not bat in the third. It was Carl Crawford who went up there as a pinch hitter for him. Carl Crawford, longtime Tampa Bay Ray, started there. Went to the Red Sox and then was part of that huge trade with Boston last summer. Good breaking balls and good cutters off that fastball from Kickham really has taken the legs out of every swing from Crawford. Crawford has not had a, a very comfortable at bat. As a hitter, you want to keep your balance in every swing. And Kicking has definitely upset the timing on every swing that Crawford's had. Two on, two on. Two and two. 92 mile an hour fastball there from Kicking. Kicking just started in Cincinnati on Monday. 70 pitches in that game, but did not get out of the third inning. And a foul along the left field line back into the crowd. Two and two. There in the ninth inning in Arizona, the D-backs with a five to nothing lead over the Colorado Rockies. The D-backs got eight shutout innings from the rookie Tyler Skaggs in that game. Just got called up. And that's pulled foul. Still two and two. Paul Goldschmidt had two more RBIs in that game. He has 71 runs batted in. Goldschmidt leads the National League and runs batted in. Full count, three and two. Yeah, really, when you think about it, Crawford's done a pretty good job to get this count to three two. He's fought off a lot of fuzz. AJ Ellis, the right hander on deck. Runners go. Off of Kicken. He scrambles after it and got him. Nice play. It'll be Pablo, Posey, and Pence coming up when we get back.
Monterey Bay Aquarium. It's sure to open your eyes, expand your mind, and delight you and your family. Dive in at MontereyBayAquarium.org slash love. Here is Yunjin Ryu, who has not yet beaten the Giants. It's his fourth start against them. He's got a pretty good shot so far tonight. He's ahead 8-1. to one. Pablo Sandoval, that's called a strike. And Pablo, I don't think I like that call. Pablo hit a double off the Willie Mays wall in right field this last time. He's one for two. Just off the inside. A ball and a strike. 82 pitches thrown by Ryu now. Posey on deck. And two and one. Well, if the Giants could get Pablo Sandoval back tonight with the bat, that would be a huge shot in the arm. The changeup is too high. Three and one. Well, the ball he hit off the wall in right field really took off, and that's that's the best contact that he's had since he got back from the disabled list. Well, yeah, you bet. Most power he's taking right field. There's Carl Clifford. So not this time for Pablo. One away. Well, Buster Posey's stepping into the batter's box, and he is our Toyota by the numbers. The all-new redesigned Toyota RAV4 is here, and with up to 31 miles per gallon, it's ready for adventure. This season versus the National League West, Buster Posey hitting 465 against the Rockies, 400 against the Dodgers, 393 against the Padres, and 290 against the D-backs. Takes a strike. Tonight he is walked and popped out to second. That's one big reason why the Giants are 23 and 17 within their division. Giants have only three hits against Ryu and none since Pablo doubled just ahead of Posey back in the third. And Buster is saying something to Manny Gonzalez about that call. Well, I think you see two things. It's inside and it's up. Let's see where the target is from Ellis. And I think the way he exaggerated his set, the ball hit the gloves while he got that pitch. But Posey really reminds me a lot of Jeff Kent. Jeff Kent would always have dialogue with, a, with an umpire, but you never could see it from the stands. He's always very humble in the way he kept his head down. Uribe. Number two. Posey is 0 for 2. Giants baseball is brought to you in part by Jack in the Box. From AT&T Park. Here is Hunter Pence. Could use a couple of breakfast jacks right now. You sound pretty good. Pence has hit into a force play, knocking in the Giants' only run. And he is struck out looking. So Pence 0 for 2. And a high pop fly, shallow center. There is Ethier. And that's six strong in the books now for Ryu, who has retired 11 in a row.
1230 for Giants pregame live before the final game of this series. And we'll be back with you on NBC Bay Area and the Giants Television Network next Saturday night, a week for tomorrow at 7 as the Giants meet the Padres. Game three of that four-game series that will lead into the All-Star break at Petco Park in San Diego. Michael Kickham back for his second inning of work. Throws a called strike to A.J. Ellis. Top of the seventh. Eight to one. The Dodgers lead the Giants. One, two. Changed up on him there. We're getting word on uh, Mad Matt Kemp from the Dodger clubhouse. Something about the AC joint in his left shoulder. Some irritation on the AC joint. Oh, and two the count. And one and two. Ellis has flied out to shallow, actually fouled out to shallow right. Singled home a run. And then he walked his last time. One hit, two official at bats. Uribe on deck. And rips that one in the left field. Gillespie cuts it off. And Ellis will hold with a single. Well, prior to tonight's game, the Giants fans observed a moment of silence in honor of former Giants pitcher Justin Miller, who passed away at his house last Wednesday in Palm Harbor, Florida. Justin Miller, 35 years old, leaves a wife and two young children. Very tragic, only 35 years old. And Justin Miller also... At one point, pitched for the Dodgers. He pitched for a few teams in Major League Baseball. Pitched well for the Giants. Yeah, good guy too. Good teammate. So sad. Uribe. He's been the, the big hitter for the Dodgers tonight. Came up with the bases loaded in the second inning. And one out and hit a two-run double. The bases were loaded again when he came up in the third. He hit a three-run triple. Five runs batted in. He popped out his last time. He knocked Matt Kane out of the game with his triple in the third. Kane lasted only two and a third innings. Ball and two strikes. I think Uribe was dreaming of this game on this night ever since he became a Dodger. It's just that he was hoping it would have happened about a hundred years before this. He, <laughs> well. But better late than never, and it is his option year. Things just did not go well for him. His first two years in L.A., he, was hit, he got hurt. He, he was ineffective when he wasn't hurt, and a lot of the time when he was playing, he still was hurt. Yeah, he was booed, and he was a target. And it was a tough time for him. Deep left center field. Gillespie back. It's gone. And that makes it seven RBIs, equaling his career record. Juan Uribe has knocked in seven. He only did that one other time when he was an American leaguer with the Chicago White Sox. Seven RBIs for Uribe here in San Francisco. Both hits this inning have come in two strike counts. And he knew it. The signature bat flip of Juan Uribe. Giant fans know all too well. And just goes down and gets it. Tando on Dodgers, and Uribe has knocked in seven of them. Up in Montreal, a little over nine years ago, he had seven RBIs in a game. June 19th, an interleague game, the White Sox against the Expos. I mean, that's two weeks worth of RBIs for most guys. Well, and for Uribe, he only had 20 RBIs all year. 35% more RBIs added to his total in just this one game. His season's total. It's all for Ryu. And he knew it. 
you can't look like Rick Russell on a hot day in St. Louis with an eight run lead. Didn't even wait for the umpire. Didn't have to make the call. I'm out. Called himself out. You know, back in those days in St. Louis, when you catch a day game middle of the summer, it, it would literally be 150 degrees on the field. And Russell found a way to conserve energy when he would go up there. If he, the Giants had a five run lead. He would stand so far in the back of the batter's box. He wouldn't even right where you see the line. That's where right back in here is where Rick Russell would stand and he would never <laughs> the bat would never come off his shoulder. And basically the, the, the umpires knew the deal too. So anything that, that didn't bounce was called a strike. And it looked like Ryu was doing the same philosophy there with a nine run lead. Belt bad hot backed up by a brain shown in the dirt and kick him can't handle it and it goes out of play. And Mark Ellis will go to second base. They're gonna they're gonna charge Belt with an error for letting it go past him. And then an error to Abreu for allowing the runner to go to second. Well, I, this is really is kind of a tough error because it, it comes up on belt. I don't really think that should be a hand, but it would have been a spectacular play had a brave been able to make a more accurate throw. Kickman was over there, but not much he could do trying to dig the one hop throw from a brave. So two errors on the play. The, the thing is, is that. It, it would have been a great play by Abreu, and maybe that's what the, um, the uh, official score is saying. But if he made a good throw to kick him, he had he would have been out. And there would have been no errors on anybody. And Belt instead of an error would have gotten an assist. <laughs> well, tonight, hey, two errors on the same play to two different guys. Fine. Whatever. It's been that kind of a night. Only two. And over to third base goes Mark Ellis. Rarely has Ellis done so little in a plate appearance and gotten so far on the bases. Well, the wheels have come off. And when you start stacking up errors, that's when fans start to lose patience. And there's a very quiet exodus in this ballpark right now. Michelle Puig. Puig walked against Kickham back in the sixth inning. The man he has yet to get a hit against. Two and two the count. Kickham, who in the big leagues this year came into the game tonight with a 13.94 earned run average. He's given up two runs in this inning and in an inning and a third in this game. But Puig goes down against him again. He's 0 for 4 now with a couple of strikeouts. Well, Puig can't figure out two things in the big leagues. One, Mike kick him. Two, he can't figure out how to stay away from walls because he has taken a beating here in Colorado. He hyperextends his leg and bangs his shoulder. This is after he's already had a couple of run ins with the wall in Dodger Stadium. Adrian Gonzalez. Crawford's got it cleanly. Mark Ellis scrambling. Ran a belt coming up. It's 10 to 1 LA.
was a ceremonial first pitch. Our pal John Yee, who joined the Giants back in 1992 with primary responsibility for his financial affairs. He played an integral role in the building of AT&T Park, the first privately financed ballpark in over 30 years. And he's known for his calm, cool, and collected demeanor and ability to consistently deliver on time, on budget. Please welcome retiring Senior Vice President and Chief Financial Officer, John Yee. One of the all-time good guys right there. So how would you think he did on the first pitch? He had a very good catcher, framed it beautifully, and uh, he didn't just drop down to his knees to do some ball blocking. He moved up and caught it, so no bounce. No bounce, yeah, that's at least a B. Well, for years, StubHub has been the place to find great Giants tickets, find great seats for this weekend series. Tomorrow and Sunday, there are still tickets available against the Dodgers on StubHub. This season, you can get more with your tickets thanks to StubHub Fan Rewards. So get to StubHub and grab your seats today. Ten to one. But <laughs> Giants fans are still having a good time. Uh, you know, one of the things that has become entertaining in this ballpark are the signs and the hats. 10 1, not going to really hurt Friday night. Have you ever, no seen, you ever seen that hat before? I have. Giants dug out score. They got a great bunch of warm hats, understandably. So if you're ever going to say be up in the. Uh, the Andes. You know, the high elevation, maybe yeah. go to Cusco up at 16,000 feet. And it gets a little cold. And Machu Picchu. I mean, that would be the kind of Giants paraphernalia you would wear down there. Because it looks like something that the, uh, maybe the Inca sort of garb from a long time ago. Have you been there? Oh, not me. I was here at that time. Y you need that hat. Once you get the hat, you have to, you kind of have to go. I didn't know they had that hat. That's why I've been holding off. One and two the count. Jerry Hairston Jr. Now at first base, Adrian Gonzalez. Gets the rest of the night off. Yunjin Ryu still in there. Got a three hitter going and a nine run lead. That ball is out of play. 41,911. The paint crowd. At AT&T Park, and not all of them are still here. Brandon Bell has struck out and fouled out to third. Two and two. Chance got a an infield hit in the first inning that probably should not have been a hit. Ryu just didn't get a good grip on it and threw a changeup to first, and then. Two more hits in the third, a single by Scudero and a double by Sandoval off the right field wall. And they haven't had any hits nor base runners since Pablo's one out double in the third. 11 in a row retired by Ryu. And we're back. Crawford. And no. The Karen played by Ethier. It's a double for Brandon Bell. Crawford is not look comfortable. Just back from a hamstring. And the, the Dodgers cannot like the look of that. Well, this is what the Giants are excited about with this swing of the bat. Driving it over the head of Crawford. I'm not really sure what he hit. May have been that he jammed his wrist or something when he hit the wall. And, uh, it, I don't think it was a face plant. Cole Gillespie has grounded out to third and grounded out to second. In his first game back in the big leagues, up in the minor leagues just today. Changed up. One and one to count. 
Well, Ryu pretty much has been able to do just about everything that he wants tonight. The best pitching that he's shown on the Giants is when there have been scoring opportunities. Dodgers have action in their bullpen. A, a guy the Jets have never seen. Down the left field line, Crawford. Nice catch! Crawford has won gold gloves in the American League, and he showed why right there. Well, it doesn't look like he's having that much fun. Well, that's the face of misery right there, but I'll say this. That's a big league catch right there. I mean, he timed this thing perfectly. And he may have jarred his shoulder. When he hit the grass, watch the right shoulder. It's not really comfortable. Well, he's taking a beat out there right now. But you know what, though? I mean, if I'm pitching, the guy does a dive play like that for me in a nine run ball game. I, I, I want that guy playing for me. Nice play. So Gillespie robbed of a hit. Brandon Crawford looked at a strike. Crawford has walked and grounded out the second. Dodgers in their bullpen have a young right hander just recently caught up in the minor leagues in the name of Jose Dominguez. And we're told that Dominguez is no stranger to a fastball at 100 miles an hour. Thanks to see this guy. A ball and a strike to Crawford. Abreu is out on deck. There he is, Jose Dominguez. Very young, very hard thrower. Off the foot, ouch. And Crawford will try to shake it off. One and two to count. Now let's see where it hits. I don't care where you put the pad, it always finds a spot where there is no pad. It comes down right above the pad on the shin bone. Dodgers lead the Giants 10 to 1. We're in the last of the seventh inning. Runner at second, one out. Ryu, very high. Two and two. That was his 106th pitch thrown in this game. Finally, Crawford backs away. AJ Ellis will start again. Drops the sun for Ryu. Now, now Ellis didn't like it. So he calls time. I'm going to go out and talk to Ryu. Well, I don't know how much English Ryu knows. There was definitely some communication. There may have been a problem with the, with the signs. Maybe Ellis may have thought that the Giants were giving him so they got them changing up. Usually when you do that, they would bring in a little infield to let them know. Going through the count. And a little pop up. Uribe in foul ground. So Crawford is 0 for 2. And uh, bad news continues for him. He's hitless in his last 23 at bats now, and only two for his last 30. So here comes Mattingly with the flame throwing Dominguez ready in the bullpen. And Ryu is out of this game, departing with a 10 to 1 lead in the last of the seventh inning. We'll be back.
Brandon Belt, the runner at second, and there is young Jose Dominguez, who's been in two big league games so far. And the, the thing we hear about him is he throws really hard. Yeah, he's got a fastball, a slider, and a changeup. Signed initially in 2008. Now watch his motion as he was warming up. He stepped in a hole, had a little bit of an ankle roll. Not a problem. Tony Abreu, switch hitter, batting left handed now. That's an easy 98, is what that is. So, so far, you believe that he does probably throw real hard? Oh, no question. You had better get it started early. This guy at the start of the season, he wouldn't even big league camp. He just lit it up, found the strike zone, and here he is. Base hit to left field. Abreu hits one of those 98s and gets an RBI single. That run charge to Ryu. It's 10 to 2, LA. And you say, why would Tim Flannery risk throwing out the runner at home? When you're down by nine runs, well, he knows that Carl Crawford has no arm. So once this thing finds its way through the left side of the infield, no hesitation whatsoever from Flannery. That's just a, an example of a third base coach knowing the opponent, what he can and cannot do. He's taking advantage of the guy's weakness. If Crawford had an even average arm, he wouldn't have sent him. Here is Gregor Blanco. And ball one at 98. Dominguez is 21 years old from the Dominican Republic. From the uh, the place that used to be the cradle of shortstops, San Pedro de Macorís. Oh, he changed up. That's the great equalizer right there. I mean, if you get a two-pitch consistency with a fastball of 98 to 100, and you're throwing change-ups, at 84 for strikes like that, he did very well here. I mean, that right there is very Mario Soto like. And Soto, the dominant pitcher in the 80s with the Reds, he never had a great break breaking ball, but he had a great fastball and a great changeup. That's a low strike on that one. One and two. And the Giants fans are still here. Break out and beat LA champ. No, why not? Just for the heck of it. One and two to Blanco. And the breaking ball for the strikeout. Ten to two LA. Hanley Ramirez coming up in the eighth.
Central every night at 1030 and tonight right after the game. Comcast Sportsnet authentic Bay Area sports. Here's the look from McCovey Cove and the port walk up into the ballpark. The Dodgers lead the Giants 10 to 2 as we head to the eighth inning. Mike Kickham back for his third inning of work as Hector Sanchez has gone into catch, replacing Buster Posey. Well, it becomes a maintenance game. Chance for Hector to get behind the plate. He'll get an at bat in the bottom of the eighth. Nick Punto is going to pinch it for Hanley Ramirez here. So Hanley extended his hitting streak to 16 consecutive games with a single and a run batted in back in the third, and he added another hit after that. Hanley went two for three and has 30 hits during that 16 game hitting streak. It's the hottest hitting streak we've seen since Marco Scudero. That's about what Marco was doing, hitting about 500. And having about two hits a game on average Early, earlier this year. Andre Ethier on deck. Base hit into right field for Punto. The big night for LA, of course, for the former giant Juan Uribe, who is due up fifth in this inning. He's had a double, a triple, and a homer. Since the Dodgers moved to Los Angeles and the Giants moved to San Francisco, and that was for the 1958 season. The Dodgers have had only two cycles achieved. And you know how some people will say, wow, he's got a single, a double, and a homer. He only needs a triple. <laughs> and he's got the cycle only. Just that, that's it? Yeah, just a simple triple. But Uribe only needs a single. Well, if you asked a hitter who's sitting on a double, a triple, and a home run, if he would like a cycle or if he'd like a double, a triple, and two home runs, he'd tell you to stick the cycle in your ear. It is, it's just more sort of a conversation piece uh, because any one of those results, and if he gets another at bat, that would be a better night than a cycle for him. But the cycle would get more publicity. It would. The Dodgers do not have a spot in their media guide for hitting two doubles, a triple, and a homer. In no, a game. they do not. But they do have a spot called hitting for the cycle that lists the name of every guy who's ever done it for the Dodgers going all the way back to 1890, the year the Dodgers were born in Brooklyn. Three and one to Andre Ethier. Who's had a double? He's flied out a couple of times and had an infield hit his last time. He's two for four. An infield hit was against Kickham in the sixth inning. Now, one of our walking monuments and living legend, Willie Mays, I mean, he never ever ceases to surprise you. And he'll come up with a story that you've never heard. And he did it to us one year in spring training. We sat down. We first got into Mike Murphy's clubhouse down at Scottsdale. Willie was sitting at the table like he will often do and sign things. And he was sitting there talking to Murph. And we sat down and we started talking about it. We were talking about cycles. Is Crawford at short. And Ethier is out with Puto in the second. And Willie started talking about how he almost had a defensive cycle. And we looked at him when he said defensive cycle, and we had no clue what he was talking about. So we said, well, what's a defensive cycle? He said, well, we play the Dodgers, and uh, first inning, Roy Wills comes up and tries to stretch a single into a double, or a, a double into a triple, and we throw him out. I throw him out from, from center field. I, I get the assist. A little later in the game, Wills tries to score from second base. He throws him out at home. He gets the assist from center field. And then a little later on in the game, Drysdale was pitching that night for the Dodgers. And he gets a base hit to right center. Mays comes over. Drysdale takes a big turn at first base. 
And Mays throws the first base, and they get him at first. An assist from center field. Now he's had an assist for third at home and at first. Now it comes back eighth inning. Jim LaFever comes up. Gets a, a bullet into the gap in right center. And he's going to try and get a double. Mays comes over, cuts it off, and throws a one-hot strike right to Tito Fuentes. And they have the fever out by 10 feet. And Tito dropped the ball. No. <laughs> and Willie Tito. kind of looked at him, and all Tito could say is, I'm sorry, Mr. Willie. <laughs> but Mays said, I, I should have had the defensive cycle and assisted every base. And I'd never heard that story before, or well, even anybody doing it. He actually would have gotten an assist, right, if they really an error on Tito, who, by the way, is broadcasting the game in Spanish tonight with uh, Erwin Higueros. Well, I don't think they ruled an error on it. Well, if, if it could have been done, Willie's the one who would have done it. Vince Scotty says the greatest catch he ever saw was not Willie Mays. Legendary catch in the 1954 World Series and a ball hit by Vic Woods, which was an incredible play. Vinny says it ended a Giants Dodger game at Ebbets Field in Brooklyn with the bases loaded. The Giants ahead by a run in the gap in left center field. Willie raced back, and then there were, the warning track was made out of cinders. Made a headlong dive, caught the ball, skidded across the cinders, and banged his head against the brick wall. They didn't have padding in those days. Is out cold. And they all went over to see if Willie held on to the ball. Not, Willie, are you okay? Is Willie dead? They saw he had the ball in the glove, and they held it up for the umpire. Out, game over. Uh, somebody want to see if Willie's okay now? Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but Vinny said that was the greatest catch that he ever saw, and he believed it was, he believed it was Willie's greatest catch. You know, you mentioned the cinder. They didn't call warning tracks back then. They were cinder paths. And when you would step on the cinder path, when we first got to Wrigley Field, when I first got there in 1977 or 76, the uh, the Cubs had a cinder path. I'm getting popcorn right now. This is Hunter Pence. Oh, he, he just could not navigate the bullpen mounds out there. And uh, stay with that ball. And, of course, the ball itself being blown around by the winds. And fortunately, he did not get a hurt going up on those mounds out there. I think that's one of the difficulties about playing here. A similar situation in, in Wrigley Field. I mean, that's an out. If it's not for the, the mounds. One and one to A.J. Ellis. Juan Uribe is on deck. He would be next. Runner at second. Two down here in the eighth inning. So Wrigley had the cinder path. And when you stepped on it, it would crunch. I mean, it was volcanic cinders or, or whatever they used, and it was porous. But when you stepped on it, it made a definitive noise. So the player would always know that he was on the track. Absolutely. From the feel of it and the sound of it. And uh, like I said, they didn't call it warning tracks back then. They called it cinder paths. But it was truly to issue a warning to the outfielder that he was closing in on the wall. So Willie, when he caught that ball in Brooklyn, not only just did not pay any attention to the, the warning, he, he got knocked out cold, but he skidded across all those cinders and was all cut up and bloody and whatnot from sliding across those cinders. Strike three. Good change up. Now, Uribe does not back here in the eighth. Scooter out. Not do up.
earlier. Brian Vogelsong trying to come back from his injury. Well, he's really maintained his fitness I and mean, he's in great shape. And you see him starting to work that hand. He's throwing more and more on a regular basis. They're starting to stretch him out now. All flat ground throws. The concern when you have had five pins in your finger and they've taken out three, I believe now, there's still two in there, is that when you throw, your finger swells up. And it's the swelling that they're concerned about. So they are pushing him with the idea that hopefully by around the first of August they're going to be able to get him back. And uh, he is just miserable because he cannot help this team. And everybody knows what type of a teammate he is. But it is good news that we're seeing on a daily basis now with Dave Greshner and Ryan Vogelsong. Nick Punto stays in the game. He's playing shortstop now with Ramirez out of the game. So Punto, who had a pinch hit single in the first half of this inning, batting for Handley Ramirez. Now short here is Kiros batting in the spot Scudero had been in. But the pitcher had been listed in that spot. And a double switch and Scudero left the game. In the sixth inning. As Kiros fouls one off the right field line facing the young hard throwing right hander Jose Dominguez. From San Pedro de Macorís in the Dominican Republic. Very hard throwing. 88 miles an hour again. A ball on the strike. Pablo Sandoval is on deck. Hector Sanchez do up third in the inning. 10 to 2 LA. Well, what we saw from Dominguez in the last inning, we saw a very good changeup and a very good slider. The slider would strike out. Gregor Blanco. So he's got three pretty good weapons off that great fastball. Two and two now. He definitely gets your attention when you get in that batter's box. Because he can put a number up on that speed gun. There's Pablo on deck. Kiros is batting for Kickham. Who worked three innings in this game. Allowed two runs, four hits. He didn't have five strikeouts in his games. Full count now. I wish everybody could stand in the batter's box and see the difference between a 90 mile an hour fastball and a 98 mile an hour fastball. Well, they've not lost their spirit out there. Along the right field line, Krug. Cuts it off, and there's that arm running away from the infield into the corner and still firing a one hop throw to second base. Pablo did a double back in the third inning and hit it well to the opposite field. Uh, he really backspins this ball, and he hasn't done this right handed in a long time. During this dry spell that he's been in, the right handed at bats really have. Have been more geared for singles and not extra base hits, but that that was a positive. Now he'll bat left-handed. Right to Mark Ellis. As Kuros quickly gets back. So Pablo gone. He's one for four in this game. And here comes Hector Sanchez. Ten to two. The Dodgers lead the Giants. When the Dodgers come up in the ninth inning, Juan Uribe, who's having an, an epic night, will be scheduled to lead off. He's still in the game. Over at third base, he's had a double, a triple, and a homer. He's equal to his career record with seven runs batted in. And he'll need a single to hit for the cycle. Ball one to Sanchez from Dominguez. Giants have uh, Jake Dunning, young right hander, warming up in their bullpen. Ten runs, 12 hits for LA, two runs, six hits for the Giants. And the bat snaps in two, but it's a transverse break. 
Well, you know one thing about looking at that piece of wood. Hector Sanchez does not cork his bats. Look at the Sammy Sosa. Broke a bat like that. And there, there's no the cork in the middle of it. The ball hits right on the label and just blows it up. That is the weirdest feeling because you have 32 ounces in your hand and all of a sudden you got about seven ounces in your hand. Sammy got suspended when they found the cork. He should. He was cheating. And he said that, oh, that's just a bat I used during batting practice, you know, to put on a show for the fans. But I don't use it in the game. It was a mistake. <laughs> yeah. Right. One and one the count. Who was the guy? Was it Albert Bell? He was accused of corking a bat. Remember there was that period of time where if you asked the umpires, they would impound the bat. Yeah. And uh, they would have an x-ray, you know, the next day or whenever they could. That's a base hit to left field for Sanchez. And I think it was at Comiskey Park in Chicago. The bat was put in some equipment room. And one of Albert Bell's teammates climbed through the air conditioning ducts at the ballpark. Like a, like a spy movie. And he... Removed the air conditioning grate and lowered himself into the room and took the bat and replaced it with another one. <laughs> it was a pitcher. It was just a, it was a, the darkest story I'd ever heard. And uh, he got away with it until somebody came up and fessed up to the story. The story was just too good to keep, I guess. Well, if anybody in baseball ever does something like that, don't keep it a secret. We all want that story. Well, I played with a lot of guys that court their bats. One ball, no strikes to Hunter Pence. Called a strike. Uh, I think it was Jason Grimsley. That's right, was Jason Grimsley. Yeah, good call. Hunter Pence, 0 for 3. He does have a run battered in. Knocked in a run in the first inning with a, a, a ground ball into a force play. He's got two men on and one man out here in the eighth facing Dominguez. But you get a good finish, Carpenter, and you cannot tell a doctor that. You cannot tell. They'll take the plug and they'll match the grain at the top and then it'll be seamless. There'll be there'll be no sign that it's a cork bat until you cut into the bat. Off the inside, three and one. And who was the guy? Swung the bat right at home plate, hit it off the end and fouled it. The end just flew off. And not cork, but like three or four Super Bowls. It's Greg Nettles. <laughs> and the little Super Bowls are bouncing up and down all around home plate. <laughs> Did he get in any trouble for that? Here's a swing and a drive in the center. Ethier back. Nice catch. Kiros tags and goes to third. So hit well by Hunter Pence. But toward the wrong part of this ballpark. I'm not sure if it was Nettles. It could have been somebody else. But this right here, this was not a cork bat. This is cork biceps. And this is an at bat that will make you feel like I just hit that ball as good as I can hit it. Didn't even go to the warning track. You got AT and T. Well, it's 399 to straightaway center, but if you hit it to the right of that 399, it's deeper everywhere along that wall, all the way out until it gets to the 421 marker. Here's Brandon Bell, and that's ball one. Runners at first and third, two down, last of the eight. The Giants are trailing 10 to 2. Bell doubled off the left field wall in the seventh inning and scored a run for the Giants. He's one for three. There's Crawford, and he's got it. Juan Uribe, the former Giant, needs a single to become the third L.A. Dodger to hit for the cycle. He leads off.
for the ninth inning for the Giants. Eleventh time that he's taken the ball from Bruce Bochy. 0 and 1 of the year with a 1 8 0 year. He really has done well. And uh, you can see just eight base runners allowed in the 10 innings. Guillermo Quiroz now behind the plate. Now Juan Uribe with the base loaded in the second inning and one out hit a double knocking in two runs and then bases loaded in the third this was a triple Gillespie made the dive and came up empty three more RBIs and then with a man aboard in the seventh a long homer no cheapy in this ballpark and so Uribe not only with a double a triple and a homer a single shot of a cycle but and this is about a hundred times more impressive the most RBIs by a Dodger by a Los Angeles Dodger ever against the Giants and the most by any Dodger going back to the Brooklyn days since Babe Herman had seven against them in April of 1930 the RBI didn't become an official stat until 1920 so I suppose it's possible that somebody had that many or more before that but uh, Uribe has had quite a night and has made some Dodger history a ball and a strike and the way Uribe things have gone so badly for him as a Dodger until this year I think he'd like to just keep it going right here Two really, really bad years. Injury plagued and just totally ineffective. Nice slider. Now a one two advantage. And a lot of his damage tonight has come in two strike counts. And I think that's the one thing that hitters pride themselves most in. Especially when you're putting up extra base hits in two strike counts, which he has done tonight. And another off speed pitch. But foul back out of play. Uribe stays alive. Dodgers have a, a guy who'd been their closer up until what a couple weeks ago, Brandon League, who is now sort of a, a reclamation project. Lost a closer job. He's lost any kind of a job except in a game like this for the time being. League is warming up in the bullpen for LA. Did he swing? Yes, he did. Well, little victories if you're the Giants. Thank you, Jake Dunning. Trying to establish yourself at the big league level. It's a big strikeout for him. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Did you that ball? Off the wall. Yeah, I don't think it would have been a homer, but. Yeah. 399. Here is Dominguez. And it's all in one. Dominguez batting for himself here. He's thrown 25 pitches in an inning and a third. That's relief for Ryu. Guarantee he had to borrow some <laughs> batting gloves. Probably a bat and a helmet, too. <laughs> Where was he going when that pitch was coming in? Ah! He may have explicit instructions to not swing the bat. This may be the only at bat he ever gets. The pitch before that, he started backing up toward the Giants' dugout as the pitch was coming in. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes, you, you may leave. Now. That's a rough at bat. First big league at bat, and you got to take it. Put so, a risk to find there. <laughs> so two down, and here is Mark Ellis. Well, my favorite was the one. When was it? A couple years ago. And maybe in Houston. Maybe last year. Or was it Milwaukee? One of the indoor ballparks, the trackable route parks. And Santiago Casilla came up to bat. And he stood in the extreme back corner of the batter's box, where he, it did look like he could reach the plate with his bat. As, Mark Ellis gets a base hit, and he wanted that one badly. Even with an eight-run lead, that's his first hit of the game. He was 0 for 5. Yeah, that makes it a win for six, Mike. That's at least tolerable. 
Yeah, the birds are back. And what happens when you have a game where the Giants fall behind to a big lead? A lot of people leave. The birds come in. And they start feasting. Well, it's another chance to see Yasiel Puig. He hit a double back in the third inning. That started the six-run inning that opened this game up. Brandon Crawford over to Abreu at second with a force out. Mark Ellis retired. A force out hit into by Puig. Giants coming up last of the ninth. Brandon League has come in to pitch for LA. And League is really, he's just trying to uh, get put back together. Look at those numbers, not very good. Uh, I mean, he doesn't lack for stuff. I mean, this guy throws mid to high 90s as well. And with sink. That one rolls foul. So Cole Gillespie. Racing hard for first, looking for his first hit of the night, but it would not stay fair. Ligg's also got a slider, and he's got a great split, so he's got three swing and miss pitches. And again, I go back to emphasize: you don't see many guys throwing mid to high 90s with sink. That's just uh, that's up there around Kevin Brown territory. You just don't see it very often. But what he doesn't have is great command, and in that he has become a Unreliable with his consistency to the strike zone, he can no longer close, and he has become a project to get to get right. Rick Honeycutt, the pitching coach of the Dodgers, he's got his hands full right now. Oh, and two, League lost his job as the closer, but when the Giants were in L.A. back on June 25th, just 10 days ago, the new closer, Kenley Jansen, had. Closed three straight games, so they done Mattingly and Rick Cunningham did not want to use him. So with a six to three lead in the ninth inning, they brought in League to try and close out the Giants. There is Ethier in left center. And it's 0 for 4 for Gillespie. You got robbed of a hit by Carl Crawford back in the seventh inning. One away here in the ninth, and Brandon Crawford will come up now. Anyway, Bleak came into that game 10 days ago. Never got an out. Pence had a single. Belt doubled him home. Torres singled Belt home. And suddenly it was 6 to 5 with a runner at first and nobody out. And they brought in the, the young lefty, Paco Rodriguez. And eventually he did get the save. Dodgers beat the Giants 6 to 5 in that game. And other than. The game last Sunday in Colorado where they got five. The Giants offense has been virtually non-existent ever since. Two runs tonight. The Giants have averaged two runs in their last 14 games. 
One and one to Brandon Crawford, who is 0 for 2 in the game. No cycle for Juan Uribe. The only two L.A. Dodgers ever to hit for the cycle, Wes Parker back in 1970, and Orlando Hudson against the Giants. Hudson did against the Giants in 09. I think that was his first home game as the Dodgers' second baseman. I think it was. And I think his last hit of the day was a triple. He knew how to make an entrance, Orlando Hudson. Brandon Crawford, 0 for his last 23. Two and two. Red Sox beat the Angels down in Southern California, six to two. Big Poppy, David Ortiz, and the former Angel Mike Napoli hit home runs, and there's a base hit for Brandon Crawford. Well, I, I tell you what, I mean, that had to happen. He needed a knock bad. That makes it a one for three night with a walk on base a couple of times, but he's been grinding hard as his batting average has been sliding. And this is really going to be his key. Let the ball get deep, send that thing the other way. We saw a lot of these type of bats early in the year when he was hitting up around 300. Nice at bat. Caught. By Mark Ellis, who makes the throw back to first. Brandon Crawford, easily back to the bag. So Abreu retired two down here in the ninth, and Gregor Blanco will come up. Gregor came into the game in the fifth inning, replacing Andres Torres. Actually, I think it was the fourth inning. Andres had had a couple of at bats, and we're told from the Giants clubhouse that Andres left the game with. A cramp in his right calf. So here is Blanco, who's 0 for 2 in the dirt. And Blanco had to be quick on his feet to avoid getting hit by that one. Yasiel Puig, the, uh, the young Dodger phenom, 1 for 5 in the game, although his one hit was a double that started the six run third inning rally. The red hot Hanley Ramirez had two more hits, extending his hitting streak. Looked like it caught a piece of Manny Gonzalez, the plate umpire. And he got a piece of Ellis, too. That was a vicious thing. I see how many guys get dinged by this thing. This is a. Oh, yeah, they got him right in the boiler. I don't think where it hit Ellis in the glove it hurt his hand. But when you're throwing sinkers, those balls feel like they weigh more when you catch it because of the spin of the ball. But most sinkers are, you know, 88, 90, some not even, but they still feel heavy. When you're throwing them at 96 miles an hour, it feels like you're catching a shot put. And if you take a one hopper in the boiler, it doesn't feel good. Call a strike. Two and one the count to Blanco. There's Yasiel Puig. Tomorrow the All-Star. Most of the All-Star rosters will be revealed. Tomorrow's game will be will be on the radio tomorrow. Can be on the Giants Radio Network. 415 first pitch. It will be a, a national tele a, a nationally televised game on the Fox Network. And it's three and two. And Bruce Bochy said that he has to have his final picks into the league office in New York by two o'clock Eastern time, which is 11 tomorrow morning. There goes the runner. And the game is over. Strike three. So the Dodgers beat the Giants. The Giants' misery continues. 10 to 2 the Dodgers just annihilate the Giants and for Matt Kane who's been pitching so well a uh, just a 
Just a real bad night for Matt. Very uncharacteristic. Two and a third innings. Uh, he gives up uh, ten base runners and eight of them score. This is not anything that we expected and uh, really quite honestly caught us by surprise. But Dodgers draw first blood in this three-game set. The Giants have some work to do tomorrow. Indeed, 415 first pitch tomorrow. For more on tonight's game, tune in to Sportsnet Central on Comcast Sportsnet. After we go off the air, which is about to happen, and tune in to Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area Sunday afternoon at 1230 for Giants pregame live before game three of the series. We'll be back with you on NBC Bay Area next Saturday night, a week for tomorrow at 7 for the Giants Padres from Petco Park in San Diego. Now, for Mike Kruko, this is John Miller. Thanks for tuning in. The Dodgers beat the Giants. 10 to 2 from San Francisco.